Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Freaky Friday. Uh, this is exciting for a few reasons. One, obviously, we took last week off, taking some downtime, a little vacation to recharge and come back to the streaming table after six months of streaming five days a week. Now, we kicked that off, 2020, pandemic, uh, but we the first week what we streamed was actually five days of Arkham, which was my introduction to the game, really. I'd played a couple games and seen the demo and stuff, but that's the first time I really got in. Uh, and today we're we're doing uh, things a little different. So we finished the uh, what was the name of that campaign we were just doing? Let me uh, Dunwich. We just did Dunwich, right? We just did Dunwich. Yeah. Return to Dunwich is actually what we were doing. Uh, and now we're going to be going through the Circle Undone campaign. But recently, the Investigator Starter Decks came out. Uh, this is a great product from Fantasy Flight Games. This is genius. I haven't even opened it. I'm kind of speaking as praise of Conceptually, it's great. We're about to see if it's actually great. <laughs> uh, which is, there's a deck for every class, five new characters, fully built deck, and most importantly, the hottest tip, if you're new to Arkham, that Steven gave me as a new player, was to build a deck with 30 to 40 Never points. Made. That's right, 30 to 40 points of upgrades uh, basically at, in your deck and then walk it back from there in terms of like how you're going to like literally go from a beginner deck all the way to the end of a campaign. Uh, but that's all contained in a single package and that's so good. This, I, there's 0% chance. If I hadn't had Steven and then all of you out there watching while we were playing, this would have been so hard to get into this game at this point. And I think a lot of people have been coming along on the journey with us getting into this game. I saw some people talking about that this morning even. So... The reason I say all that is that this is a $15 deck, kind of like Marvel Champions, fully playable deck with the upgrade path uh, for all five uh, you know, of the classes. Buy my book. That's right, buy it here. Uh, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening these up and looking through them because this is the most, uh, as far as I'm aware, easily the most number of investigator playable cards that have come out at one time. Absolutely, and they're all just bringing the heat. Massive shock to the system, plus the Innsmouth Conspiracy. We're literally today charging subscribers. It's coming out in two weeks. That's so a deluxe. That's five new investigators with all the investigator cards in that box. It should be already processed, right? Today. So if you get a sub right now, you're, it's over, too late. Yeah. It's uh, for the you're, next one. If you're unfamiliar, we have subscriptions for each type of product, including the investigator starters, uh, deluxes, packs, etc. You sign up, automatically get everything. Don't have to lift a finger. It just shows up. That said, uh, so what we're going to do today, we're going to open these decks, take a look, look at the characters, get a vibe of it, and then we're literally going to go through the Circle Undone campaign limited to a deck. Like new players, As like many of you who are going to be watching this are going to do. Yeah, and so it's kind of cool because we get to really put these decks to the test. We also get to see basically what we can make out of the single single deck that we're dealing with. So we're going to be diving in and uh, taking a look and seeing what we think about these new products. A couple of things to note. First of all, we've been tweaking the audio. Tell me if the audio is uh, good, bad, better, worse. What I'm trying to do, and I think Wirecast is just compressing, and I'm trying to make sure that it is the same level as other produced videos on the platform. That's the main um, thing. On YouTube and Twitch. Now we're going through Wirecast to restream uh, to the various different platforms. So there's all sorts of shenanigans that can come into play there. But the levels that I'm getting are perfect, and I just want to make sure that they're good Warner there. says audio seems great. Josh says audio sounds good. Chris says good. Zen Trickster, audio is buttery okay, great. smooth. Great, everybody, love it. Secondarily, what you're looking at here is the finished version of our Undone board, perfectly compatible with, you guessed it, the Circle Undone campaign, which we're about to start on. We finally hit By it. By design. That's right. We're trying to get Innsmouth uh, going. It's having to sprint uh, quickly to get there by the time that cycle There comes was a out. comment. But it's possible. I'm going to read this comment. It's possible. We're trying to get caught up. I want the full collection. We're almost you know? there, right? Because there's Dream Circle and uh, Innsmouth. Innsmouth. Yeah, and we all, we were almost capable of playing Innsmouth out by the time Innsmouth was coming out, but that's not going to happen. Almost capable. Uh, I play purple I saying, believe. hey guys, I just got my boards and tokens in today. They are amazing. I placed another order this morning now that Circle Undone board is available. Can I add it to my other order? Message, uh, message customer service as fast as possible, Robert Siddeley in the other it, room. It's going to be tough because if you order this morning, that order would have been it's being packed up right now. It may be gone. Uh, so, well, Which in many ways is great. <laughs> but in your particular case, is not great for It is right the now. downside of shipping as fast as we possibly can. Uh, but do check it out, seriously, because uh, you know things are in the air. They don't ship quite as fast sometimes because of COVID and we're keeping staff separate and whatnot. So write in as fast as you can right now and say, can I get these orders combined? If it hasn't shipped yet, that will absolutely happen, 100%. Um, 
Now we've got the undone board. I've got one that has a slight defect on it uh, during the production, so I, I claimed that one for myself so that I would have <laughs> for one free. for free. Uh, so if you see a little mark on it, uh, don't worry about it. Keenblaze saying, hey, I was buying everything piecemeal through Miniature Market, but your guys' subscription thing is so awesome since I buy everything anyway, and I wanted to support your streams, so I signed up for your Arkham subscriptions for the next cycle. Welcome. We appreciate it. Hopefully you will enjoy uh, the ease of it. it as someone who's playing a lot of these games at this point, five days a week. I've heard that. Not having to actually, even though we're talking about these games all the time, not having to follow the releases is so nice. Uh, so welcome, and we appreciate your support. It literally allows us to do exactly this, which is uh, stream five days a week and everything else we have going on. Shall we, uh, shall we decide on investigators now, or should we decide on investigators after we like kind of run them all down? I, I, I don't so, feel like we have time to go through all these cars. Like a, that's like a it, super unboxing. Here's what I think we should do. Yeah, a mega unboxing. Okay. Uh, I think that we should open them all up, and we should read the investigator. Okay. And then based on the investigator, we should pick our investigators. I'm at randomize. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up Winifred here. Okay, and I'm just gonna open. Okay, let's just open pack. them all and just take a I, look at the theme. I assume the investigator will be the top card in the the sealed pack on the inside, but we will see. We will see. Got a little piece of plastic there. So I've been Sweeney saying he got the investigator decks through us because the local store was allocated. Hey, listen up. This allocation business has got to go. Tired of it. Yeah. Whether your local store is getting hosed, whether we're getting hosed, somebody's getting hosed somewhere. It seems like. Uh, I'm over so, it. Anyway, it did happen. It happened on uh, Barkham for us. Which is technically coming out today. Is so devastating. I hate writing those emails. Uh, 60, I think we got about 60% of what we requested literally six months ago, half of a year ago. How can an industry function like this? I don't understand. However, um, everything else that is not, so Barkham was weird. You guys should just know that. And if your local retailer is saying they got allocated, it's for the same reason. From my understanding, this is purely speculation. This is not inside track stuff at all. I'm just reading the articles and you know looking at Twitter. So the Barkham Horror thing came out of the joke that was the April Fool's dog thing. You know what I mean? You yeah. remember that? It's they like, oh, they announced funny. a product in April Fool's that was Barkham Horror. And then everybody was like, hey, we really want this. And so it seems like at that point there was like a side project that started. Hey, let's actually that was see like, if we hey, can make it. Hey, here's this funny novelty product. Let's try and see if we can get this printed. It succeeded, uh, and it did not flow in any standard ways uh, through the system that we're used to for all of these other Arkham products. So the fact they got allocated, I think, is mainly just because it wasn't seen as a serious product. It didn't flow through the standard channels, and then everybody wanted it because, of course, we all want new cards and, and fun things to play with. And uh, and then it was like, oh no, we only printed, you know, who knows, a hundred. It, uh, it's more than that, but it's amazing to me that somehow, some way, Arkham can be underestimated. Still, yeah, they, well, they had a lot. So the thing is, they had a ton of allocation issues with Arkham early on. Mm -hmm. Like the first year was bad. Even now, like product is hard to come by. Like if you're looking for certain, yeah, backstock, super difficult. Yeah, like it just keeps going. Uh, here's a cool comment from Carth Carthagian saying, "Hey guys, I found your channel last week, and I've been binging your content ever since." So glad to be able to catch a live stream. Welcome, happy to have you, glad you found us. Uh, there's a lot of uh, awesome people hanging out in the chat, so feel free to make yourself at home. You're welcome here. That's right, Vindicator. PDP, that's the way. <laughs> that is that, the way forward. Yeah, well, if allocation happens with ashes, you'll know something has gone horrendously <laughs> wrong. Very wrong. <laughs> at that point, it's an unsolved problem. In fact, problem. put me if out in the pasture <laughs> at that point. I'm just done at that point. Uh, and you're right on, Ben, saying uh, they just did a reprint of Carcosa and Dunwich. So right now is the time to buy those products. Find them online. Uh, we'll, we'll have them on our site if we can get them. We but get restocks as often as we can. If we're out of something, just, there's always a wait list. Um, but point, if you can just get them. If you can hunt it down, you do it. Just Let's, get them and then start your subscription. I was going to say, start a subscription and stop worrying about it. Uh, Vincent saying, I haven't seen these yet, but I vote Stella, just so Zach can scream, Stella! <laughs> like Marlon Stella! Brando in Streetcar Named Desire. That's right. Uh, okay, give me. You need to see right, your uh, main card, and then your deck building requirements, and your uh, signature cards. All right. So who you got first? You want me to start? The, the, Stella hit, Clark. Hit, hit Here me. we go. Here's Stella. Stella. Uh, now I'm gonna say, just from the picture on the front and the description on the back, I was interested in Stella. Okay. You and like we the haven't played service? this class, right? Uh, I don't think Survivor's really been featured much on the channel. We had the weird one, which was the discard uh, gal. Patrice. You discard at the end, but that that doesn't really count. She's a whole different kind of rainbow. Uh, Stella Clark here. Chosen and Civic. Very cool. Do we get... Yeah, hold on. You want to read this? Hey, quick, quick. I'm going to answer the question. Jacob says, 
Hey Team Covenant, love the new circle and done boards. Just ordered two of them. Hey, thank you so much. This question, do you all know when the Dunwich boards might be back in stock? They're the only ones I'm missing. Dunwich boards are weird. So like uh, we use copper powder in those, copper infused, etc. And copper powder has gone insane. Um, it started messing with our production. It wasn't working like it traditionally was. The manufacturer we were using, whatever they were doing was, was different than before. Tried a bunch of other uh, manufacturers of that copper powder. None of them worked. Uh, so we're still trying to sort that out. We don't know if it's like a COVID related thing, which it, it shouldn't be, uh, or if it's just copper changed, which doesn't, it's not possible. Uh, don't maybe know. The, the copper powder industry is engaged in some sort of weird um, conspiracy to <laughs> defraud us of uh, money. We don't know what's going on, uh, but we're, we're trying to track it down. We're working with our uh, manufacturer here in Tulsa to see if we can solve that problem, but I, I don't know. We may have to rethink the entire yeah. approach to that. You can board. sign up for the wait list, and if we can do it, again, you'll get an email when those are back in, but otherwise, we're, we're working to solve it. Uh, Use Psychology says, hey, thank you guys so much for all your work. I'm picking up a set of the campaign and investigator tokens and a board as we speak. Beautiful. Virtual hug, virtual hug, virtual that hug, helps virtual hug. So much. David, sad story saying, I had a subscription for Barkham Horror, but unfortunately, I got a super sad email from you guys. So, someone in the UK is saying they got the same thing from an yeah, online uh, retailer. Super sorry about that. It's just it's the worst a, thing in this industry. It's, it's probably the problem we are most focused on trying to solve across the board uh, it, as it relates to our business. So, that's something we continue to ride down and do the best that we can with this, the systems that are in place. See things like the PDP model we're doing with Ashes to literally solve this problem explicitly. Stella Clark tapped on the door to the professor's office. The plaque next to the door read Harvey Walters. Wait, there's a story in here. Same as the label on her package. It wasn't often that she delivered fragile parcels like this, but apparently the professor had some pull with her higher-ups. Upon hearing no response, she called out through the door of Mr. Walters. The answer was mumbled and distracted, but affirmative. She shrugged and opened the door. So keep in mind, Stella Clark, uh, Harvey Walters. So we've got actually Harvey as an investigator. That reminds me of our well. uh, Zoe Nor Storm and Norman pair that we They're had. They're talking to each other. Yeah, we got another old man seeker. Makes is that all they're good for? Makes a lot of sense. I mean, sense. they got to be the wise, knowledgeable people, right? I'm going to guess his agility stat is less than three. Uh, Mr. Walter sat at his desk, really fast old person. pouring over an array. I, I can. It's I actually, actually really uh, funny. Shannon's dad uh, won like the over sixty-five uh, oh. half marathon. <laughs> you saying he's an old guy? He ran a half marathon faster than I did. He ran it in like one fifty-nine, and I did it. You know what was heartbreaking? Two hours and like fifty-two seconds. I was that close to cracking a two-hour half marathon. Fifty-two oh, seconds away. Oh, really? Which is like a benchmark for. Having something to talk physical about. Physical prowess, etc. Mr. Walter said it is desk. Is port. that a sticker you can put on the back of your car? No, it's just in my brain. You know what I'm talking about, right? This I do. Yeah. 13.1. Yeah, I have a 0.0 she, <laughs> sticker. She marveled at the many strange trinkets, dusty books, and ancient relics on display in the elderly, elderly man's office. He glanced up, and as soon as he spotted the bundles she carried, his demeanor changed instantly. Is that from Amazon? Uh, the excitement and that's not true. The excitement and curiosity in his voice was palpable. Don't really know what it is, just that it's meant for you, she replied, placing the package on his desk. It was awfully heavy for a simple book, but then it was Miskatonic University. And things weren't so cut and dried when it came to the books here, or so she'd heard. It's a most valuable tome, he declared, as he tore apart the packaging like a child opening a birthday present, and a very rare translation at that. Not easily acquired. If you knew the links, I... His breath caught when he saw the cover of the manuscript. No, this is... Something is wrong. Stella was sure that she had brought the right package to the right place, though she never quite knew what to do with the extra envelope marked STELLA, all caps, that always found its way into her satchel. She always prided herself on being diligent regarding her other deliveries. What's the issue, sir? This isn't the Petrus de Dacia translation, Mr. Mr. Walter scowled. This is a fake. Stella is a scrappy underdog who is able to snatch victory from the claws of defeat. Say no more. That's all I need to know. So there's Stella, mail carrier. She's got... Pull up this card. Bryce, can you pull up this card? Do we need to go to the top down? I don't ever know. I'm sorry. Uh, chosen Civic. So Stella Clark, the letter carrier. Uh, investigator card. She has an ability. First of all, let's look at the stats. Yeah, we need to go to the table shop for the Okay, pop. let's go to the table shop. We're going. Uh, By the way, apparently every investigator's story leads into someone else's story. Oh, who's the so first I, one? I have you. I'm the first one? I think so. Did I just? I don't know. And then it, there's Harvey. I think it's a circle. Get oh, it? Oh, <laughs> very cool. It's undone. 
Cell of has got a three brain, a two book, a three fight, and a four agility. I'm gonna love this because it, uh, it's, a, it's an agility stat. It's an evade based deck potentially. She's it's a fast. reasonable head and fight stat. Uh, not much of a seeker, but Survivor has ways, you of know. course, as we know. Has the ability, after you fail a skill test, you may take an additional action this turn, this round. So fail a skill test. Get an action. So you get a free fail every round. Once per round. Stella delivers. Yeah, exactly. Very. Neither rain nor snow. Uh, and then superstar effect plus one, I can instead choose to automatically fail the skill test to heal one damage and one horror. So heal one, get an extra action. Go for it. One damage and one horror. Hold on. And an extra action. Yep. So this is a this is a long, long running survivor strategy. It's called uh, Failing to the top or something. I don't know. Somebody probably had a, a clever deck build yeah. uh, name for it. Uh, but there's it's a like, lot of cards in Survivor that are like, if you fail, X. So uh, basically, you fail, but then you win. How could you go wrong there? It's like Sh the, uh, what was that, how Martell in Thrones? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we win because we fail. Wasn't that fun? Uh, she is 8 and 8. Good call there, uh, those Burner. Are, those are good stats. 8 and 8. Those are good numbers. Um, She's got survivor cards 0 to 5 and neutral 0 to 5, the easiest uh, deck building requirements in the game. And then she has three copies of neither rain nor snow, one copy of called by the mists, and one random weakness, which is actually already included in here. So neither rain nor snow. Now this this is where you start to get into the uh, the real understanding of what an three investigator copies of this is thing. going to do. Yeah, and it's a skill card. And do those, do those three count towards card. your uh, They do not. Deck? No. Right. Do not count towards your limit. Neither your weaknesses, either. So Stella can throw this card into a skill test to get plus three. If it fails, cancel all effects of the failed test. So this is a super consistent investigator. You go for the big <laughs> test, plus three, what do you got? Plus five, plus eight, you can't fail unless it's a tentacle. You fail on the tentacle, all of the effects are canceled. That's an incredible amount of reliability. I love yeah, it. these three wilds are crazy. Absolutely love it. And then Called by the Mist, beautiful art on this card. It has water in it, hello. Uh, it says, put it into play, and then after you initiate a skill test with a difficulty of four or higher, take one damage. you got to spend two actions to, to drop it. Well, that's fine. Just okay. waste a little time. So let me tell you about Harvey. Harvey's actually the name of the main character in the suit show I was talking about earlier. Wouldn't you know it? Very nice. He's not this old, though. Uh, Harvey says, in quotes, so what is it we're looking for exactly, Jacqueline asked, gazing at the vast array of tomes and treaties that, so Jacqueline's next, by the way, Got that it. filled the shelves of the, here you go, Orrin Library. Harvey shook his head, scowling. If I knew, I wouldn't have asked for your help. Harvey Walters was a professor of history and archaeology and an expert on ancient relics and dead languages. His true calling, however, was the occult. While many of his colleagues might doubt the abilities of a supposed psychic, he knew better than to doubt. Doubt was dangerous. Very few knew that the Necronomicon had been sent here, a close friend in Tromso, Norway, and perhaps one or two of his acquaintances, no more. Tromso, Norway is an incredible name. <laughs> That's right. Whoever stole it must have both lofty connections within Arkham and reasons to know of the book's value. Not many know of Abdul al Hazred's work, and the mob would not have bothered to create a facsimile such as the one Harvey received in the mail. Whoever stole the real copy must have known the sort of secrets it held, Harvey shuddered to think of what a scholar with the wrong intentions might achieve with the knowledge contained in such a dangerous tome. Harvey's companion closed her eyes and began to feel the air around her as though playing an invisible instrument. I see a symbol, a circle, no, many circles, and shapes too impossible to describe. Her fingers, fingers trembled as the vision claimed her. That sounds like one of the etchings of Abdul's, the professor hypothetical. Hypothesized? Hypo hypothesized. Nailed it. Deep in thought, he approached a tall, sagging bookshelf at the end of the hall and ran his wrinkled fingers over the spines of its weighty tomes. Finally, he settled on one and withdrew it, a treatise on the many obscure religions, religious sects of ancient Egypt. Excuse me. al Hazred had many devotees. Some formed cults based on his writings, dangerous cults. He gathered several more books, placing them in a pile on a nearby table. Look... Looks like I have my work cut out for me. Dot, 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 dot. Hello. Lots of circles. You ever feel like when we're reading these things, like you're back in like high school? And it's yeah, like, and you tell, the teacher calls like, on you. The teacher's like, ah, you're going to be Romeo today. And I'm reading Romeo and Juliet. It's like, oh, no. So many 
so many ways to embarrass myself by mispronouncing <laughs> a word. You know what I mean? Uh, I would have killed to read Romeo, and I also know that you skipped the uh, last English class in high school. Senior so. year of English, I did. I didn't. I I p tested out of it for good reason. That villain, uh, <laughs> old villain, Mrs. Rita, Wilkes. You mean? Mrs. Wilkes. Yeah. So she was my tenth grade. Uh, she was a fine English teacher, and she yeah. loved me in tenth grade for some reason. She made me. She made me read Romo, Romeo every day. Really? It, well, you're probably the most Romeo looking. <laughs> I mean, you Romeo. got kind of an old world thing. Uh, the thing about it was, especially tenth grade, I was extremely shy. Mm. Reading Romeo was mm -hmm. terrifying because I was publicly reading in front of the class, and right. also had to be Romeo. Right. Which is, if you knowing me, the emotional range that I have isn't exactly. Uh, Built for Romeo, right? No, yeah, you're uh, you're you're pretty pretty much a, stra a straight line. Yeah, that's the goal. Um, so what do you think about uh, Harvey? Well, let's read his card. Let's take a look. Right. All right, he looks uh, well versed at life. Harvey Walters, uh, professor. He's got four brain, five book. Hold the phone. He's got five book. Joining another the 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 club of old men who have the five book. Did. I mean, it's like that's so good in this game. Five's the magic number. It's and hard it's printed to, here. It's hard to ignore. Uh, he's only got one fight though, and two foot. He's not as slow as old man Withers. Right? I want so bad to play him and Norman together <laughs> and just have the old men like trying to get through life. The Inklings, the, yeah. the Inklings <laughs> yeah, club, the, the book club, dude. Right. <laughs> Uh, he has a reaction. I'm surprised you know that. After an investigator, I, Tolkien and uh, C.S. Lewis are high yeah, on my was list. Is Hemingway of, in there? I don't, I don't know, I think so. No. After an investigator people. at your location draws up one or more cards from their deck during the investigation phase, that investigator draws one extra card. Limit once per round. So wait, anytime you draw a card, you draw one more. After an investigator at your location draws a card, he can make them draw another card. And it's during the investigation phase only, not the normal That's draw right. phase. Mm -hmm. And his star effect is plus mm -hmm. one. Draw a card. He's also got seven uh, physical and eight mental. I like how they just like rolled out with the investigator starter for a very specific kind of player. You want to draw cards? This Twenty percent of the audience right now is like, yes. yes. <laughs> That's De all I want to do. It's Deck what size I value. Thirty. He can include seeker cards zero to five and neutral cards zero to five. Uh, he gets vault of knowledge, which is a three cost asset. Mm. Harvey Walters only. Your maximum hand size is increased by two. Reaction after you successfully investigate, exhaust vaults of knowledge, and choose an investigator at your location. That investigator draws a card. Oh, that's so good. Uh, drawing cards is so good in this game. Then he also gets uh, Thrice Damned Curiosity and a random basic weakness. So his Thrice Damned Curiosity. Treachery Revelation for every three cards in your hand, take a damage. Ooh. He's playing with fire. That's that's not that's not too he bad. Wants, he has an extra hand size of plus two. He draws a lot. It's not as bad as gems. Uh, so that's what he does. Now, re re weave me a tale of... It's hard to get excited about somebody who's just drawing cards, right? It's it's fundies. It is fundies. I mean, a five book and drawing a bunch of cards, there's so many good cards in Seeker that work with that. I want, His deck probably is full of a lot of the old... Are there, There's reprints in the decks, right? Yeah, so like, uh, as an example, on this Harvey Walter sheet, his deck, let me just uh, read you the names of cards yeah, that I, I, I recognize. Yeah, Scrap or Will Survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's all sorts of old cards in here. What a great value, honestly. <gasps> a level one leather coat? Extensive research is in here. Yeah. Preposterous sketches is in here. So it's all deduction the is in of here. Course. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, a level one cherished keepsake. What? Hold the phone. What are you, what are you doing? We weren't supposed to be peeking. Yeah, sorry. My gosh. These are my favorite cards. And I have new versions, and there's a chainsaw in there that I I've feel never like seen the uh, I'm going to pick a random deck thing just went right it's, out the door. It's just Stella. Jacqueline's coming in here. Dreams and premonitions were often one and the same for Jacqueline. Now, what is the difference? A dream, a dream you have to be asleep, and then a premonition, you're, it's like a vision. You're like awake. I think premonitions specifically are just uh, future-based realities. Like, like seeing into the future. Yeah, whereas like a dream could be preposterous. So is it like all circles or squares, all rectangles or circles or whatever it is? All rectangles are all squares or rectangles. I, uh, all rectangles are not. So squares. basically, are all premonitions dreams? I don't know yeah. if you have to be asleep to have a premonition. I don't think so. I think you can be awake. It's just like ask, you know. ask old Paul Mwadib about that. Also, in Arkham, anything's anything's possible. That's true. Words can even be redefined. It, it, honestly, <laughs> in Arkham in 2020, there are no rules. <laughs> it's a premonition already. I'm having one right now. She was haunted by dark futures. Okay, through these portents. She would seek the narrow paths that would avoid catastrophe, but oft times such paths led to mortal peril or worse. What do you think is worse than mortal peril? 
Immortal Peril? Ooh, yeah. eternal peril. Yeah, that's not what you want. In her latest vision, Jacqueline glimpsed events that would culminate in one of two outcomes. Either the tenuous status quo between the mundane and the supernatural would be maintained, okay. or Arkham would be thrown into absolute chaos. It would begin with a theft, then a pursuit, then a confrontation, and then she could not see any further. It's like an episode of Burn Notice. So the theft being the book that's gone. Clearly. What was the next thing after the theft? I don't think any Arkham campaign hasn't started with a stolen book. Right? It's like every episode of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Ja Jacqueline would have to play the part of the fulcrum. Uh, mm. You know, the, the yeah. tension part. That was Ahsoka's code name in Rebels. I didn't know that. Yeah. She opened the door to the gym and peered around. As out of place as one could be. Thankfully, it didn't take long for her to find the man she'd seen in her vision. Nathaniel! According to the advertisement on the poster outside, the boxer had just completed his training and he was drenched in sweat. He regarded her cautiously as she approached. If you're looking for tickets to my next fight, he began. I am here on more urgent matters, she interrupted. His eyes darted to both of the room's exits. What is this about? O'Banion's giving you trouble? She noticed, his fence, fists clenched. No, she whispered. Worse. <laughs> Worse. Jacqueline is an adaptable, combo-heavy mystic who is proficient in manipulating and predicting the outcomes of skill tests. Move over, Jim Culver. Oh, that's what it says? Here There's comes a description. Jackie. I yep. didn't know there was a Harvey version in it. Hold on. Harvey is an, a Eurydite seeker who excels at drawing cards and managing a hand flush with cards. So, so the fact that Eurydite was used in the description immediately is like... You don't like it? I don't know what the word means. Uh, you know, it only applies to old people with glasses. I, I, I contact clues only. <laughs> Literally. Be on erudite. That's how I exist in life. Uh, what is that? Like well-cultured or well-knowledged? It comes from the uh, Greek erude. Erude? You know, you can get away with saying that in almost any context, and people will definitely believe that you're intelligent. I feel like there's, but there will come the one conversation you have with someone who actually knows it. Yeah. And they will call you on it. But and then, then you, you just leave. you got to bail, because then you're not the smart <laughs> oh, I have anymore. to go to the bathroom. Jacqueline Fine has, she's a psychic. Nice art on this, too. Just understated and just yeah. like, okay, what are you up to? Uh, clairvoyant, has a five brain. Love that, always. Uh, three book, two fist, two uh, foot. That's not, that's not terrible. When an investigator at your location would reveal any number of chaos tokens, usually one, Reveal two additional tokens. Of the revealed tokens, choose and cancel two non-tentacle tokens or one tentacle token once per round. What is this? <laughs> She's like a grotesque statue. What is going on with so this? So she literally can cancel a tentacle once a round or she can cancel two non-tentacles. So basically, most of the times what this looks like is you're going to do a test, you draw three tokens, cancel two non-tentacles or cancel one tentacle. It's literally what I was doing with Jim and the and uh, the the uh, ally. Who's yeah. the ally? I know what you're talking about. And then you draw three every time. But you have to you have to resolve two with that ally. You want to resolve one and cancel two non tentacles. But you can't. She can't. are you kidding? Yeah. What is? But like she can't cancel other negatives, right? So like if you got a negative two, negative two, negative two. Right. You'd resolve all three negative twos. No. She, can, she only cancels symbols. Cancel two non-tentacle tokens. Oh. Any two. Or you can resolve two of them and cancel the tentacle that is your third token. This is mind-blowingly good to me. It's hard for me to appreciate how this isn't the best thing I've well, ever Well, Retro seen. Daniel makes a good point. He says, they all have great stats and abilities to make up for their lack of deck building options. She's better than Jim, but she can't take any non-mystic stuff. So they're, these are all single class yeah. characters. That's a restriction. Yeah, as if level zero to five mystic cards is any kind of meaningful restriction. I mean, it is. They can do everything. You ready, for, you ready to hear about Nath Nathaniel? Uh, no, I want to see what Arbiter of Fates does. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my asset here has got a bunch of good icons on it, great art as well. It's called Arbiter of Fates. When you use Jacqueline Fine's reaction ability, so the take three, exhaust, this use of her ability doesn't count towards its limit. You can do it twice. That's very difficult for me to believe. She good. Let's look at the weakness. It better just kill her. <laughs> you did. Dark future, omen, end times. Put it into play in your threat area. You cannot cancel or ignore all of the symbols. 
So, you know, heart, stars, horseshoes, etc. Mm -hmm. At the end of your turn, reveal five random tokens from the chaos bag. If a superstar is revealed, discard dark future. That's pretty bad. Let me see. You can't get rid of it unless you, you... There's a world where that is with you the entire game because you just can't draw the superstar out of the five. Oh, dude, and look at that art. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah that's so good. That's, what, a, that's a high risk, high reward. Right one there. thing I will say, uh, realizing that these decks are probably going to be some people's first experience in the game. Mm -hmm. They're giving them the, the juice. I, I think you should give them the juice. Ooh, and she has nihilism as her basic weakness, which immediately is interesting to me. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. It means nothing to me. Get it? Uh, all right, Nathaniel Nathaniel cracked his knuckles. When this did the boxer. stream get so funny? This is the box. Uh, you know, we took a week <laughs> off, so we have all this energy and nothing to do with it. Nathaniel cracked his knuckles. The last of the goons backed up until he was pressed against the rear wall of the alleyway. He cradled the volume, voluminous tome, voluminous, <laughs> voluminous tome in his arms like it was a small child. The rest of the man's crew lay on the ground around Nathaniel, writing and breathing, writhing. Not writing. Writhing and groaning in pain. The book, the boxer demanded, ex extending his hand. I'm not going to ask again. Writing and groaning in pain is uh, <laughs> also very realistic yeah. for all authors. Yeah, that's what the Inklings did. My dad being one of them. Yep. Uh, Winifred, I'm very excited about Winnie, by the way, who had watched the... Zoom this in a little bit. Watched his work, whistled in admiration. I'd listen to the man if I were you. She offered a bit of wisdom to the mobster. Or you'll end up like your pals here. But the goon shook his head. I can't. His eyes were pleading. Nathaniel grimaced. The man was frightened, but not of him. Something else terrified him to his very core. Far worse than Nathaniel and his fist ever could. It's that brotherhood, isn't it? He spat, though he didn't understand their cryptic motivations. He'd learned all about the secret of cult that controlled the gang's actions. Is the circle, is the brotherhood involved in the circle? We'll have to find out, won't we? It would be very thematic if it was. Yeah, Brotherhood's always around. The panic, cultists, panic so. flashed across the goon's eyes. Sweat beaded on his forehead. Look, just give us the book, and nobody's going to hurt you, all right? Winnie chimed, but the man collapsed again against the wall and held the tome even tighter, muttering to himself in sheer terror. What's got him so coiled up, Nathaniel thought. Then he heard the noise behind him. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Yeah, onomatopoeia there. Slow, steady, quiet, but dreadful all the same. Something at the entrance to the alleyway was sc scratching, no, tearing, into the cement with each step it took. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Nice. Nathaniel held his breath, clenched his jaw, and turned to face this new horror. Nathaniel is a combo-heavy <laughs> fighter who uses events that deal damage to dispatch enemies one after another. That's pretty cool. That was like reading a radio play. <laughs> Uh, let's look at Nathaniel real quick. I probably won't play Nathaniel because he sounds a lot like Zoe, mm -hmm. who I played most recently. Great character. Though, Nathaniel Cho, five attack. Magic five. Two, f two speed, two book, three brain. That's a pretty good stat line. I get it. Reaction. When you deal damage to an enemy by an event or fight ability on an event, deal an additional damage. Limit once per phase. Superstar effect. Plus one of the skill test is successful during an attack. Return an event from your discard pile. To your hand. No, you gotta love that. Nine, nine health, six sanity. In quotes, I must fight on. That it's so funny that you built that Zoe deck. Whenever this is like the guy, who's built for that kind. Mono mono does two damage. It's pretty good. Are you kidding? I mean, All like the, Spectral Razor uh, does Spectre, four, but he can't play. He can't play it. No, he can't. Because he's got guardian cards only. His mono neutral mono neutral card zero to five. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, it's time. They got cheeseburgers at Arkham. They do. Uh, in case you guys were unaware, it's National Cheeseburger Day. So uh, we're having cheeseburgers delivered to our desk. Thank Robert. you so much, Robert. Uh, there were some kind words I about didn't know our <laughs> service and Robert earlier. Uh, so a shout out to you. Thank you so much, Robert. So now we're going to enjoy hamburgers while we read this. I'm going to get through these cards real quick. Then we're going to chat about a decision while we eat hamburgers on National Hamburger Day. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Nicholas says thick bergs. Um, okay, his, his guardian card is 0 to 5. Neutral card is 0 to 5. Uh, doesn't count to his deck. He has Randall Cho. As an ally, concerned brother, two cost asset with a brain, a book, and a question mark for his commit test. A wild, as some would call it. He's an ally mm -hmm. and a medic. Nathaniel Cho deck only fast action after the Randall Cho enters play. Heal three damage or search your deck or discard pile for a weapon asset. Play it, paying its cost, and shuffle your deck. These cards are so good. Three, three sanity, one physical. All of these cards are so good. He also gets one Tommy Malloy, which is his uh, arch rival nemesis, 
prey in Nathaniel Cho only. Hunter, forced when Tommy Malloy would take an, any amount of damage, reduce it by one. And then he gets uh, one mm. random basic weakness. Oh, so he basically turns off uh, Nathaniel's ability. Yep. They call him the Big Palooka, by the way. Nathaniel calls him scum. What if I could just make that up? I mean, they call him the Big Palooka. The Big Palooka. Like, talking about? Randall is misprinted. Reduce it to one. Oh, reduce it to one. Very nice. Okay. The well, one damage ever. That word makes a big difference. Winifred Habamock. Winnie. Why do I... Claire says, wait a minute. Did you say National Hamburger Day? It's National Cheeseburger Day. This uh, this stream brought to you by... It's also doo -doo 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 -doo. National Arkham Horror Day. I Freaky don't, Friday. Where do is there an official? I've asked this before, not live. Is there an official the, a calendar right for these days? And it's run by the Fed, right? And that you can lobby to get days added. And many days have multiple things on the same. Is that day. real? Yeah. Hmm. I know there's also state, like states and cities will also have like Stephen Woolley Day because you did something great in Tulsa. One day. 2028. Stephen Woolley Boulevard. I'll be driving it down with the top down. <laughs> S-dubs, bully. <laughs> bully. Yeah, that's right. With my <laughs> aviators on, and my gold watch. Winnie leaned out of the delivery truck's passenger side window and fired a few more shots from her Mauser at the rear tires of the fleeing Franklin. Come on, he's getting away. Can't this thing go any faster? Stella bit her lip. She'd never driven her truck this fast before. It was important that they recover the tablet, but she also really didn't want to end up in the Arkham Advertiser's obituaries. What are you, crazy? You want to go faster? Winnie scoffed. Please, this isn't even the craziest thing I've done today. Her companion rolled her eyes and betrayed herself with a chuckle. Winnie's reckless, carefree attitude had a dangerous tendency to rub off on those around her. The notorious aviatrix, the so-called woman without fear, lived for danger like this. Stella gripped the wheel tight, her knuckles pale. She stomped on the accelerator and hoped their quarry wouldn't take a hard turn. Downtown Arkham became a blur as they whirled past the First National Bank, drawing closer and closer to Independence Square. Stella had to swerve to avoid slower and wiser traffic, but eventually they started to gain on the Franklin. Then Winnie started to climb out the truck's window. What in the hell are you doing, Stella screamed. Excuse me. Winnie flashed her a grin as she scrambled onto the hood of the delivery truck, ready to make a daring leap. Having some fun. Whoa, Winnie. I like the sound of all this. Winifred is a versatile rogue and a risk taker who excels at going all in on important skill tests. Wait, there's more. It also seems like Winnie and Stella are a natural pair. But I'll make my case in a minute. Yeah, kind of a uh, Bonnie and Clyde type situation. That's right. What about our cards? Let's take a look. Ooh. Yikes. The Arkham Death Sentence, a one-brain stat. She's got it where it counts, though. That is actually not true. Where it counts in this game is the brain stat. Otherwise, there are many times you're just going to lose. Mark my words. Three book, three fist, five agility, like we were talking about. The most important stat in the game. <laughs> She has a uh, fast response. If two different non-weakness cards you control are committed to the skill test, draw one card. So you commit two cards to the skill test, you back. draw one. Run and gun. I'm, I'm going to have to learn the timing on that. If they're committed, but when? After the skill test? Before the skill test? I guess there's a window. We always forget this. There's a window. Uh, there's a window somewhere. Uh, superstar effect plus one. After this test ends, for every two points you succeeded by, return a card you committed to this test to your hand. So kind of like a super Silas type. Uh, Silas is the if things go wrong, I'm not hosed. She's the if things go right, I'm really great. I'm on it. I'm on it. Uh, okay, anything you can do better. Whoa, what is this card? Oh, it's a skill weakness. I don't know. Have I seen that before? That's like a new template. CJ is saying, once all cards are declared as committed, you get to draw. You cannot commit a card you drew from her effect. Yeah, it makes sense. So she's got anything you can do better, arrogance, and one random basic weakness, which I guess they gave her reckless there. Okay, anything you can do better, look at how many symbols are on that. Six. First glance. Can you see it from there? Yeah, it looks like six. Six, six symbols. Plus six, commit to a skill test you're performing. Plus six to anything. 
Imagine that on the crystallizer. Plus six m with Jacqueline Fine drawing three tokens. You can't fail. Impossible. Is there a uh, crystallizer in this list? I don't know. We have to look at it. Probably not. Seems like it'd be really good. The crystallizer can only do events. You can't do skill cards. Mm. There are some cool guns in this, guys. In all of these, I've seen some very cool guns. The Mauser C96. Good example. Arrogance. It does have the lucky cigarette case. Mm, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, you must commit arrogance to each eligible skill test you can you perform. Eligible skill test you perform. This skill's icon subtract from your skill value instead of adding to it. If the test succeeds, return it to your hand. Isn't this exactly what Silas does? I don't know. I've never played Silas. Um, what is his bad one? What's that called? You've got to commit it if it's in your hand and it makes it worse. What is that called? There's somebody out there knows that. Uh, it's interesting. Okay, so we've got Winifred of the No Brain. Of the house No Brain. Uh, we've got I've got a cheeseburger that's burning a hole in my yeah, gas. Yeah, you gotta get that. Get that cheeseburger. So what's your, uh, I'm gonna eat a burger and discuss. Yeah, yeah. Talk about the, the machinations of factory farming. Ah. Ethics and stuff? Ethics. What would Chidi say? I was vegetarian for a while. I'd go back to it, honestly. Burgers are tasty also, but that's not a good <laughs> reason. It's really not. I've got, there's a uh, J Cross Ranch, you should check it out, by where I'm about to move, where I'm about to live. And they've like got an like, actual ranch? Yeah, legit. You can get like the half cow kind of stuff. I thought that's you meant, where I'm going. I thought you meant it was like a ranch dressing. No, no. What's it called? But there probably is that too. It's like J Cross Ranch, I think it is. Okay. So you're just gonna uh, start buying cows. Yeah. Well, yeah. After they've been after uh, the of the process yes. variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've they've been processed. But I think a quarter. You start with a quarter, maybe, or maybe a half. Probably a quarter. Or Jonathan and I could split a half. Deep freeze it, you know, and then you can pull it out and. You get a deep freezer. I'm not. Jonathan. Hopefully. He seems like the kind of person that would have a deep uh, freezer. He'd have six deep freezers. Yeah, they'd all be stuffed all my to the gills. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, do you have Harvey's little uh, Harvey card? We're missing it. Are we sure? Yeah, this is Arkham. This is how it happens. <laughs> just like that. It how did that go away? <laughs> how did just, that happen? Things just go away. Um, okay, so everybody. Maybe friends, it wasn't in there. It was in there. Must be. They never make mistakes like that. Who should we play? Now, I'm inclined to head for Stella because I did say that I should play a survivor and this seems like a great survivor to play. Uh, so I'm just going to do that. It's not even a question. Oh, you're done. But so, where, where, where are you? What are you thinking? Are you going to randomize? So I'm not going with Nathaniel. That's too close to Zoe. I just think Harvey is a little too straightforward for me and we don't have his card. Yeah, and nobody needs a seeker. Uh, so I'm down to... I like the idea of a pilot because it's Winnie, and I like Winnie, the name. If we do Survivor Rogue, that is going to be some weird Arkham, and that's pretty exciting because it's like neither one of them actually does anything well. Like, you know, like Seeker. None of the core stuff well. Seeker is clues. We got Fighter in Guardian, and we've got anything you want to do in Mystic. Rogue, as far as I can tell these days, is all about getting money uh, and, and making big bets. And then Survivor is about failing but making it okay, basically. And I'm gonna I'm gonna bet she's got like look what I found in here probably. Let's take a look. Um, if you don't have look what I found, yeah, there it is. Okay, so I've got some clues. I've got oops, of course. Take heart, of course. Hey, this is a good deck. Pierre says, Zach breaks books back and touches cards with greasy hands. Heresy. This is what I've been living with my whole time, my whole life. But he's very good at organizing cards <laughs> and very <laughs> particular about it. It's like alphabetical <laughs> by type and number and the moon phases, et cetera. And it, I'm like, it's all about just like practical use stuff. Like I'm not like a fancy, like. I'm not fancy. I'm not fancy, but like it needs to be very usable. Yeah. Uh, shuffled Mini Harvey into the deck. Okay, so somebody said we actually just did this. Wow. Watching closely. I mean, if it's true, it's not been verified. Big if true. Yeah. 
Trust but verify. Don't mind me. Happy <laughs> National Cheeseburger Day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not National Make a Shot Day. It's <laughs> just complete whiff. Don't you love that? Oh, there it is. Boom. Oh my god. What MVP. a genius. Who was that? Hey, I want to start seeing votes Neiman... for Neiman's Wasser. Neiman's Wasser? Did I just say something weird in German? It's probably Neiman D. Swasser. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to go between Winnie and Jacqueline. I want to hear from chat, though. I'm going to get some more. Okay, Winnie. I think everybody's saying Winnie. Everyone wants red and green because it's hilarious. It's got to be Winnie, right? Like That's Winnie and Stella, you, you've got reliable and insane. That seems like the right call. Is that right? Are we going to Are we gonna get roasted? Ooh, we got some Jackie. Oh, got some Jackie heat going on here, huh? Hey, there's a lot of Jackie fans. Have you played Mystic? Uh uh. That's why I was. Ooh. That's why I was on it. Hey, everybody seems to be saying, boom, roasted. Everybody seems to be saying uh, Jackie just on a subjective. Huh. There's just like, yeah, it's hard to know. But Jackie's getting a lot. Jackie's getting a lot. Even Trez Million. Trez Million coming in here on, on uh, Jackie as well. But we could random it. We could draw a chaos token. Evens, Jackie, odds, Winnie. It should really be a, if it's an icon, it's uh, Jacqueline, right? OK. She I don't know the odds, but that seems fine. I don't know if I'm going to go random. That seems crazy. There are no odds. In here's here's a real question. Cthulhu. We're about to play a whole campaign mm -hmm. with this decision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well. So my I'm going to sleep my cars before I get my hands all greasy. Yeah. My real question is like I have a pile of sleeves for you. See, this is I also have these around. Yeah. What a pal. I'm, I'm this guy. What a pal. <clears throat> um, is you know basically Ashley. People having played Circle Undone, I don't want any spoilers, but having played it, knowing this deck, your deck with uh, Stella, which of these would be a more oh. fun experience and not us just getting wrecked every game? Zach, we will not get wrecked, no matter what happens. The game, there's none of these decks that are going to get wrecked. None of these decks in any of the campaigns would get wrecked. None of them. Unless you're playing like blindfolded. I bet we could, I mean, we're just <laughs> playing on standard. Bre Breck Eek Eek Ewe says, I love that you're saying you'll stick to the <laughs> pre-made deck. Curious to see if you can hold to it through the whole campaign. Yeah, no joke, right? Uh, any of these decks is going to work just fine. <laughs> Vincent says, some people think getting wrecked is fun, dot, 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 for us to watch. <laughs> Sleeker's Mobile making a good point. He says, Stella already has Evade covered, so I'd vote Jackie. That's a good point. There's a lot of Jackie. But we could have, hey, you know, you really want to do something? You really want to go for it? You really want to do something? We could play a, uh, I think I called it a uh, pillow fight uh, scenario before. Uh, no fighting. You can only evade. Kill nothing. Pacifism. I'm a pacifism campaign. Gary says, I predict you guys will abandon the included cards by scenario three. You you shouldn't doubt our determination. Yeah, no, I, I can take the mantle of a... That would be so fun. I don't know if it's possible in Circle Undone, but uh, the idea of a game where you just can't fight. punch or fight yeah. at all, unless, unless the campaign absolutely requires it, pretty cool. A lot of people thinking Winnie's not good enough without the rest of the collection. Well, that would be a failure on the pre-constructed deck. That would uh, be a good test. Yeah, you could at least verify, you know. David, do you guys have survived what I've considered impossible odds before? <laughs> yeah, no joke. We've gotten very fortunate in this game. When I play by my, not by myself, <laughs> but in my non-stream group, I don't draw nearly as good, and I, I don't... My cards don't come together like they do here. There's something special in this room. I, I do feel like we are good at eking out every ounce of value when we need to. Yeah. 
Uh, I How love do you this comment. We've gotten this far with Covenant. That's right. That's literally the story of our lives. Ben Sweeney's comment here says, "You guys are you're asking the guy who played Tony Zeros, Joe Diamond, and Zoe not to kill things." That's why. Which is an you need, ask. A, you need a new. Also nailed that shot. You need a new. Uh, you need a new concept of what it is to play Arkham. I think. Wow, it's hilarious to see a cheeseburger next to an undone board. <laughs> <laughs> that is really funny. Art, art, some say. Yeah, I call this, uh, I don't know. Wait, what's the, isn't there a, uh, oh, Haster. There's a Haster joke here. A hamburger? Hamburger, yeah. The hamburger, <laughs> the Hasturgler. It's finally manifested in front of me. <laughs> a cheeseburger for scale. That's I right. like that yeah. a lot. Hey, this is the new Undone board, too. If you guys, this just went on sale today. Uh, not this one. But for the price of, how much are these now? Like $2? Phil's Master, that cheeseburger is going to undo your heart. Yeah, I know. No, they're like $1.40. Are, they, are these McDoubles or are these the oh, those are double cheese? McDoubles. No, these are double cheese. Different. You know they changed it. McDouble, one slice of cheese, uh, double cheeseburger, they two slices. They cut out all got to at least $2. pennies from that yeah. equation. I haven't eaten McDonald's in a very long time. Uh, so about two dollars. So this is equal to about <laughs> nine cheeseburgers. <laughs> Which one is uh, is this nine times as valuable oh as this? God. I don't like that. I just think about that, that. Is, that's literally <laughs> there's a weird pat. I don't pat like that. I've never patted a cheeseburger. The, uh, you know, the burger is like ten seconds of gratification, whereas the board is a lifetime. Of it's joy. a lifetime of joy. Uh, that's yeah. right. Put it in the uh, description. Dude, this right. comment actually sums it up. Robert Niven on top of it says, I love how Zach just ate his cheeseburger out of the wrapper and Steven got his all set up on the napkin. <laughs> yeah, that tells you everything you need to know. Literally, like I said, practical, right? I, I just like immediately go for it. But I shuffle my cards backwards sometimes. It doesn't make any sense. People are complex creatures. There's not a, a unified field theory here. Speaking of complex creatures, we're going to do this live. <laughs> Vincent saying, put the burger in the chaos bag. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Disgusting. We can both agree on that. All right. Disgusting. People also saying the prologue setup and stuff for Circle is hilarious. Yeah. yeah but luckily, the prologue. we have this. Um, we have a book that we can't that or Chris, don't know what comes uh, from. Chris Hodevec, uh, one of our community members, got us. Also, this is funny. <laughs> Look. Mmm. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to leave that there. I have, I have two cards here. <laughs> the signature card for Stella and Jacqueline. Not mm -hmm. Stella. Uh, Winnie and Jacqueline. You gonna roll a die? I'm just gonna let you pick a random card. Okay. You don't have to shuffle them if it's random. I just, I don't want uh, anything happening. So, put them on that flat on the table. Phil's match says apparently you don't even use these decks for the prologue. Yeah, you don't, but that's fine. Flat on the table here. All right, All right chat. One's purple, one's green. Green's Winnie, purple's Jacqueline. Tell me when you finalize your pick, but then mm -hmm. I'm just going to peek. It's... First one I heard was left. This one. It's Winnie time. It's Winnie. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Exactly what I was hoping for. Then the stream goes wild. Okay. I got to get my sleeves out. Is that your deck? Give me mm -hmm. my little pack sleeves. Mm -hmm. All right, now put <laughs> our new decks aside. Ben Sweeney says, "Get them an air horn." <laughs> yep. I'm just leaving it. Eventually, well, it would it would honestly just go right off the rails once we had that engaged. I don't I don't think it's healthy for us. To oh have wait, that. did you sleep your whole stack? No, because it's not your deck. No, I have the extras right here. I gotta, how do you know where your deck starts and stops? Uh, the experience points. Mmm, just all the level zero cards. Yeah, have you played Arkham before? No. Sure not. Based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Looks like a holdout blaster. Quite a divisive figure these days. The, the Mauser C96. Tell me that's not a holdout blaster. Where is it? Oh, yeah, wow. That's probably actually, so a lot of the Star Wars weapons, they had World War II weapons, and they would modify them, like, just a little bit to make like them look Star Wars-y. a couple of weird, like, lights. So I would not be surprised if that was actually uh, the gun. Preface. 
The Circle Undone is a campaign for Arkham Horror, the card game, for one to four players. The Circle Undone Deluxe expansion contains a prologue scenario, Disappearing to the Twilight Estate, and two full scenarios, The Witching Hour and At Death's Doorstep. These scenarios can be played on their own or combined with the six Mythos packs, The Secret Name, etc. Uh, for a part of a nine-part Circle Undone campaign, which is what we'll be doing today. The cards can be identified by the what I thought was the Carcosa mask, but is actually... Uh, some sort of uh, uh, infinity ribbon that's been sliced through. Mm. To the set up the has Circle been Undone campaign, yeah. May the circle be unbroken. Choose the difficulty level and assemble the chaos bag. We're doing standard, right? Standard seems right on the money for us. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. Apparently, by the way, Jeremy's saying that's uh, true. Han's gun is based on. Boom. I I can see it. It's in it's in my blood. Yeah. You're back on Star Wars after that Mandalorian trailer. Oh my goodness. Put the fire in my Star Wars bones. Plus one. Zero, zero. Minus one, minus one. Minus two, minus two. Minus three, minus four. We don't have a minus four in here. To the bag. The bag of bags. We must be playing pretty heavy because I have these coin collectors in our own our uh, Robert and Philip group, and they're in like pristine condition, and ours are like beat up. Well, I feel like we're obviously moving at a three to five times pace as your side group. You guys were meeting like once every month or two, right? You saying we're slow? It's a word for it. All right, boom <clears throat> and boom. Okay, done. Look at all that nonsense we don't have to deal with. Get them out of here. My affiliation. This is your like pristine new bag. Right? My bag of bags. Is that the one you inherited basically? Yeah. I traded. They're the same size, right? Mm -hmm. Should be. Okay. Bag is made. We're going to standard. Additional rules and clarifications. Pay attention. Haunted. New ability. If you fail a skill test while investigating a location, after doing all of the results, you resolve the haunted ability is on that location. So if you fail to investigate, you get ghosted, basically. Okay. A location is haunted for the purposes of card effects if it has at least one haunted ability printed or otherwise. What does a non-printed ha haunted ability look like? Verbal? Someone, someone said, did you add a minus three? Yeah, I think so. Well, I said it out loud for sure, but whether it happened. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, there it is. This is a baby bag. I know, yeah. Alert. You fail a skill test against an alert, uh, evade, you, you attack you. It's basically retaliate for evade. Story cards are a new card type in the Circle Undone. They contain, uh, they serve as an avenue for additional narrative and typically appear as the reverse side of another scenario card. When instructed to resolve a story card, read its text and resolve its game text, if any. That seems like what we do from the beginning of all Arkham. Uh, tarot slots, a new slot. Uh, you get a tarot slot and you can have one tarot card in play in the game. Now, is there a thematic reason we should make those options for us to upgrade into? Yeah, we'll, we'll take a card or something. That's fine. We've already broken the rules, you see? But it's the circle and done. I, I would only do it for campaign theme reasons. Uh, Keith got a good question here. Can you can you hit uh, Keith up with the, do you have to buy the course set or not? You still have to buy the course uh, set. Keith's saying, can you learn Arkham with Disney Investigator Dex or do you have to have the course set? So I, I think you need the core set foundationally for two things. One, uh, it comes with all the, the tokens, so like yeah, the bag cool. and stuff. Uh, the other thing is the like scenario stuff. There's like basic scenario cards that go into the campaigns. Like there's little the what is the it's not the weaknesses. The, no, no, no. There are weaknesses, but it's the little uh, like eight cards that have the whippoorwill thing on it or mm -hmm. the. Uh, like modular sets and champions, but there are a lot of core set cards that get brought into campaigns. Yeah, so you yep. kind of need you need at least one core set. But the recommendation is a core set, and then the investigator starters are a good place to start after that. But if you have anybody who owns the game, who's playing the game, you can buy an investigator starter and join up. So that's a good thing. It's really what it's for. Um, you know, because we've got like if if Zach and I were playing at the store randomly, uh, and then you're like, hey, I, I want to play this. We we might be like. Hey, well, 
join, get one of those investigator starter decks and come on over. Or we might say, this is scenario six, Todd. Can't join us. Random name. All right, get ready. I'm, I'm about to... I'm about to regale you with some text. You want me to read that while you're eating your bird? Nope. All right. I like to I like to take my time with it. All right. Really, uh... I, I'm Max Value, <laughs> as you know. That's a good nickname. Max Value. They call me Max Value. Sunday, November 22nd, 1925, Arkham, Massachusetts. That's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. That's almost 100 years ago. It's 1920s. Through, though All Hallows Eve is nearly a month past, a grim melancholy lingers throughout the town. Each morning, a thick fog permeates the streets. Nights are beginning to grow longer, and if you ask around town, you'll hear people swear that it's getting darker, too. Well, that's technically true, Winter. given the way that the sun works. So there's nothing to see here, aside from maybe some fog issues. <clears throat> but despite the gloomy mood, progress continues in the sleepy town of Arkham. The election of Nathaniel Rhodes to the United States Senate has upstanding members of the community feeling optimistic about the town's future. Of note, that is where the Rhodes Scholarship comes from. Mm. Continue my answering Keith real quick. Uh, if you've never played, I would grab the core set like you're saying and the Investigator Star decks if you can find them. Those are great decks to just start playing with. Go ahead. And tonight, at his well-appointed estate in French Hill, a man named Joseph Meiger host the Silver Twilight Lodge's Charity Gala, an annual members-only event that will turn deadly for several attendees. Whoa! They really just spilled the beans on that one, didn't they? Each player must choose one of the following neutral investigators to control for the duration of this prologue. Grab that stack, would you? Mm -hmm. Gavriella Misra. Yep. Jerome Davids. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have to play Jerome because he subbed in for Jim a couple of times That's right. and I couldn't find the card. Penny White or Valentino Rivas. Throughout this prologue, you will play through this character's story and make choices that will determine his or her fate. Your choice of investigator has no direct effect on your standard investigator deck, though the results of the prologue will influence the story. Do not assemble an investigator deck, etc. Instead, gather the cards listed on the reverse side of your uh, neutral investigator. Those cards will be used in the unique setup. All listed cards are considered level zero unless otherwise noted. If there are three or fewer players in the campaign, in the missing persons section of the campaign log, cross off the profiles of any of the neutral investigators who were not chosen. Continue to page 12. All right, so let's work something out here. Stella. First of all, the log. Is the campaign log? Where is it? Oh, there's the tome. In fact, this is actually a relevant burger for scale situation. That really lets you know how big. That's a big tome. Yep. Although they don't know how big the burger is. I do know how big a card is, though. Most people probably have a good idea of how big a hamburger is. OK. I'm, taking, I'm making a new page. We've got our Marvel Champions campaign. Campaign going down there. Mm -hmm. and we've got our old Dumbwich Legacy. We sacrificed Earl only. And seemingly a sketch of a logo or something. I think, I think it was a, a uh, successful venture. What else is even in here? Look at that. What is this? Some illicit art. Okay, circle undone. Stella, who are you? Plus Winnie? Mm hmm. All right, and then we'll do a little side uh, piece of her. Missing persons. CJ says, eating cheeseburger so slow. Phyllis Master says, he's letting it age. <laughs> have you, have, you dealt with, have you dealt with aged beef before that is literally uh, moldy on the outside? No? Mm -mm. Clearly not. Well, Garlic says, do you guys have Whataburger up there? We do. We do. Man, I had it actually uh, yesterday morning, if you can believe that. That breakfast burger is on fire. You just got eggs on it. You got to add lettuce and tomato. It's got egg. It's got the beef patty. See, the, the key thing to me is like many people do the breakfast thing, and it's got to be sausage. It's like, give me that beef patty, potato. <laughs> give me that beef patty. The beef patty. There's the hash brown potato layer. Mm -hmm. There's the beautiful egg layer. There's a you know some kind of a high calorie sauce, and then I do the lettuce and tomato and onion on the top. But it's a lot of sandwich. Because, you know, I like I like to 
stay healthy. Okay, who are you choosing? I'm choosing Jerome right off the bat. I owe it to Jerome to honor the memory of... I'm going to go Gabriella. Gabriella. Okay, so Valentino is missing. <laughs> Although I have always wanted to be a wealthy philanthropist. <laughs> well, you're well on your way, buddy. <laughs> Valentino and Penny are missing. Okay, done. Do I have a mini card for Jerome? It would be very funny if we didn't have it because literally I used it for Jim. We don't have it. We've got to have it. But we'll, I mean, we, we do have it. have it somewhere in our... I'm going to continue with the story. Oh, cross off the ones you didn't pick. Okay. So, uh, and then we have Jerome. And we have uh, Gabriella. And then I'll cross these off. Done. Hey, Joe, no worries. Joe Sko Skaronsky. Skaronsky. Hey, GC, want to thank you for the thank you for the content. Well, you're you're super welcome. Super welcome. There he is. It's, uh, the pleasure of our life. Thank you. I'm actually going to use the my little mini sleeve. For As this, a, a bookity mark instead of Stella. And let's get your room in a sleeve too. You got a? We got one of those there. I don't. I don't have those okay, right. I got you. Here we go. Just gonna sub in Jerome and Stella. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph Meiger announces, raising a glass of champagne and a toast. A hush descends on the room until only the crackle of the fireplace and whispers of gossip can be heard. Allow me to welcome you all into my home for this year's charity gala. We have some very upstanding citizens here tonight, and I thank all of you for your hard work and generosity. Cheers and murmurs of agreement fill the room. Ah, yes, aren't we great? Many of the guests raise their glasses to Valentino, one of the most esteemed members of the lodge this year, who sits at the guest of honor table, which is nearest to the fireplace. That seems delightfully specific. It is. Joseph's assistant, Jerome, blends into the wall behind Joseph, discreetly checking his pocket watch. Got a uh, Jim Comey situation there. That's a funny joke. Not even political. In another corner of the room, the head housekeeper, Penny, walks from the table to table, walks from table to table, filling empty glasses and collecting dirty salad plates. Each of you has done great deeds in the name of the Silver Twilight Lodge and our historic city, Joseph continues. Next year, we will continue to shoulder this burden and do what must be done for the sake of progress. Jerome steps forward quietly. Is that you? No, that's me. Interrupting Joseph's speech with the unassuming confidence that comes from years of trusted service. He taps Joseph lightly on his shoulder and shows him the time. I'm afraid I'm already out of time. Thank you all very much for attending, Joseph concludes bowing. Polite applause rises from the audience and Joseph walks briskly toward the parlor, followed closely by his assistant. Two servants collect coats as late comers trickle into the manor and Gabriella, Joseph's head of security. Hi, right. you look super tough. She is tough. Watches over the entrance with hard eyes and a clenched jaw. Has Mr. Sanford arrived? Joseph asks curtly, tapping his polished leather shoe on the floor. I'm afraid not, Jerome replies, flipping through the last pages of the estate's guest book. But he should be here any minute, Mr. Meiger. Good. I want there to be no problems whatsoever when he arrives. Am I understood? Joseph calls out to Gabriella. Make sure he is well protected. You nod, patting the handle of your 45 in your shoulder holster. Joseph turns his attention back to his assistant. And have Penny make sure the main course is kept good and hot while we wait for Mr. Sanford's arrival. Not a single slice is to be served without his presence. Not even for Mr. Rivas, sir, Jerome asks, glancing at Joseph over the rim of his thick glasses. Joseph pauses for a moment, considering. Pour Mr. Rivas another glass of champagne, and I'm sure he will not complain. Also, I'm still waiting on those accounts I asked you about earlier today. Don't forget, Joseph says, clapping his assistant on the shoulder before walking back into the banquet hall. Jerome nods obediently and heads upstairs. Soon after, the dark mist would appear, and nothing would be the same. Bum, bum, bum. One at a time, each player must proceed to the intro for their chosen character and read that section aloud for Gavriella. Continue to page 14, and here you go. <clears throat> I'll listen longingly while I eat this. Hamburger. Longingly listening. You stand guard as instructed, waiting for Mr. Sanford to appear. By now, the remaining guests have filed into the banquet hall, and you can hear the sounds of merriment and drinking coming from beyond the wooden door behind you. 
You pay them no mind, remaining vigilant. Years of fighting and discipline have taught you to be ready for anything, even at a harmless banquet like this. Just as you begin to ponder whether your talents are being wasted under Mr. Meiger's employ, a dark mist invades the parlor through the front door and the window frames, flooding the room. At first, you believe it to be only the evening fog seeping through the manor's entryway, until you begin to notice that everything the mist touches seems to have decayed as though it aged hundreds of years. Hmm. <clears throat> you step back cautiously, keeping a hand on the grip of your weapon just in case. That's a pretty casual way to, I mean, everything's aging hundreds of years that this mist is touching? It's almost 100 years ago. Including the human beings? Guess so. Never in all your years have you seen something like this. An unnatural chill spreads throughout the room and shivers run up your spine. As the ashen mist finishes pouring in, it coalesces into a singular form, a humanoid figure wrapped in shadows. It raises its hand and points at you with a charred, blackened finger. You unholster your firearm and point at the creature, allowing your training to take over. Don't come any closer, you shout. The thing watching you from the entrance is unfazed. Its ethereal form begins to glide toward you, dark mist crawling over the carpet in its wake. I warned you, you growl, and a thunderous shot echoes through the parlor as you squeeze the trigger. The bullet rips a hole in the figure's head like a rushing air billowing through a column of smoke. The mist stitches itself together, and the thing continues to drift your way, reaching out menacingly. Nothing could have prepared you for combat with such an unnatural enemy. Faced with another option, you turn and flee up the staircase nearby, pausing to squeeze off several more shots at the top. The bullets that make their target simply pass harmlessly through the ghostly figure, striking the door behind. A few stray shots shatter a column of the staircase's wooden balustrade? Balustrade? No. Balustrade. Balustrade? You're Jerome? I'm Jerome. Yeah, thanks, Chet. My mic was literally on the table. You carefully flip through the pages of Mr. Meiger's ledger, looking for the accounts he inquired about. Now, what exactly happened with you? You're shooting at stuff, a right? A mist comes into the room, making things age. It forms into a person, and I'm trying to shoot at it. The bullet goes through it, and oh, it right. forms again. I run up the stairs. I shoot. It's making the uh, stairs get all chipped up and stuff. Can't shoot fog. Rule number one. Yeah. Tried. You carefully flip through the pages of the ledger, looking for the accounts you inquired about. You've served Mr. Meiger faithfully for almost a decade, and he trusts you with sensitive information like this. A point of pride for you. While you're often curious about your employer's business, you've never pried into his personal matters. Not until tonight. <clears throat> anyway. You adjust your glasses and lean forward as you turn to the page regarding Mr. Meiger's request. Some of the names on the list you recognize. Revis. Gensler, Fairmont, Rhodes, Wick, Peppy, Becky. <laughs> I almost did that without laughing. But many are names you have never heard of before, let alone seen affiliated with Mr. Meiger's work. Lindquist, Konstantinov, Magro, Atkinson, Lamar. Just how deep do Mr. Meiger's connections go? Strange as that may seem, it's the list of names on the page afterward that raises your hackles. While it was clear that the names on the previous page are associates of Mr. Meiger's, or at least prominent members of the Lodge, you can only assume that this next series of names is of people your employer is targeting. For what, you cannot say. You stand next to Joseph's desk and record the list in your pocket journal carefully, making sure to keep the names in the exact order they appear in Mr. Meiger's ledger. You hope that your suspicion is nothing more than the absurd imagination of an overworked secretary. Yet still, something about all of this has you concerned. That, and the sudden draft of frigid air that has somehow wafted into the room. Your gaze naturally drifts to the window, at which point you scream out in shock and lose your balance, stumbling backward into Mr. Meiger's desk. Pressed up against the office window was a host of screaming faces emerging from the mist, or perhaps composed of it. Their ghostly hands press against the glass, their eyes hollow and empty. Your reading glasses clatter to the ground and shatter under your heel as you scramble to the other side of the office. You don't realize that you dropped your pocket journal in the chaos until it's too late. And you age yourself right into Jim Culver. <laughs> All right, return to page 13. OK. Uh, okay, we don't need to read the other intros because uh, they're not here. We didn't choose them. Once each player has read, continue to set up on page 22. Okay. Gather all cards from the following encounter sets. Disappearance of the Twilight Estate in that stack. All right, hold on. Uh, What's and it look like? A bunch of them. 
All right, so we got the, oh no, these are not organized. The door? The door. The three arrows. Not three in arrows, it. not in. Not in it, not in it, not in it. Yeah, I think they're organized. It's probably just a weird miger on top there. A Sauron Tower? Mm. Nope. What's that doing in there? That's a corset card, I thought. <clears throat> uh, yeah, weird door. horse hand thing. Door. Yeah. door, 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 door. Uh, another weird spectral. That's in there. It's the yep. tomb. Yeah, the coffin, cracked coffin. Mm -hmm. The five. Nice. Is the, it going to uh, be? Yeah. Hyena. Okay, hey, they might all be in here. No corset required? Oh, five. no, we've got this. Uh, what is this one? The deep, dark... It's the thing that makes triangle. the doom happen, right? Is it Ancient Evils? I don't think it's Ancient Evils. It's the Obscuring Fog one and the Locked Door or something. I don't know. You're not supposed to pay that close attention, I don't think, or you're kind of ruining the surprise. Okay. Door. Door. Look at us just flipping the, the rolls here. Lots of doors. Yeah. It's an estate. And I got the death doorstep, which is a door. Hold on, this doesn't look right. Do we need these? That's over the threshold. That's a totally new. It's got that thing. That's weird. It's got a totally new thing. Let's not let's not put those. in Well, that doorstep is the next. Yeah. We don't need that thing. Hold on, maybe it tells us. Uh, gather all of them. It says gather all of them. When gathering at death's doorstep, only gather the seven spectral locations from that encounter set. It's like that test. We talk about this a lot. It's that test you had in school, you know, where it Do gave you, read you 20 the things, sentence? and then you did a really embarrassing things, and the last rule was don't read anything. So what's the uh, spectral? Yeah, look on the front and back. They should have the spectral uh, trait there. And they might be past here. They might be past where we were already. Did you see this thing where they put the burger in like the display case, and it lasted for like seven years? Uncomfortable. So what? We only gather the spectrals this time. Mm -hmm. Seven. All right. So that's these, and then the rest of these go back. Yeah. <clears throat> only spectral locations should be in the in the stack. That's what I have. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll put the spectral watcher in the entry hall. And so just I'm just gonna grab the entry hall, and we'll set this up in a second. Entry hall. Spectral watcher here. Ding. Okay. Then uh, each player follows a setup instruction on the back of the investigator card. Shuffle the encounter cards to build the encounter deck. And here we go. Uh, we've got a suggested setup here of plus sign in the middle. It's probably going to be the hallway. And then we've got the heart. The master bedroom next to the halls. And we've got the balcony up here. And we've got the uh, entryway. Here, of course, classic map. We've got the triangle, we've got the diamond, and of course, we've got the office. Okay, done. Consider it close to being done. Okay, uh, so Werner says do the setup on the back of the investigators before shuffling the encounter deck. Yeah, so it says put it into play, then each player follows the setup instructions, then we shuffle. So I begin playing the office. I'm in the Victorian halls. Mm-hmm. And hey, we're close to each other. That's very nice. Uh, search the gathered cards for a copy of Nether Mist and one copy of Obscuring Fog. That should be the upside down triangles, probably. Nether Mist and Obscuring Fog. Did we get the triangles? The corset ones? I haven't gotten the corset okay. ones. I got it. It's in the yeah, you got the stack. I think Obscuring Fog and the other one is there. Spawn the nether mist in the office and attach obscuring fog to the office. Well, this is weird. Starting play area and nothing. That should be the, uh, that's all done, which. Is that the course set? Mm -hmm. It had something weird in front of it. The gathering, the first scenario. Oh, uh, okay. Yeno? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that obscuring triangle. This is so hard if you don't know what's Arkham. going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Crypt chill, obscuring fog. Done. That's all we got. 
So give me, I need one obscuring fog. And then I also need one, uh, what is that, spectral something or other? Can you search for that? Uh, spectral uh, nether mist. Any nether mists? No? Shapes in the mist? Realm of torment? All right, we've done something wrong. Here it is, nether mist. Boom. And then uh, spawn nether mist in, into the office. Is that where I am? Yes. And then uh, attach obscuring fog to the office. Boom, 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 boom. OK, I've got all my stuff. Nothing in starting play. And then my opening hand is a bunch of corset cards that I'll go get. Why do you start out? Victorian Hall has placed a damage on the Spectral Watcher. Are you with the Spectral Watcher? No. no, it's down here. It gets a damage. You do um, good stuff. Search the gather cards for one copy of Fate of All Fools. Here it is. Mm -hmm. And put it into play in your threat area. Uh, you begin with one resource instead of five. I start with three. Ouch. Hmm. Okay, and then it says starting play area, and then it's core set cards. I need a 45 automatic Man. and a physical training. So that's those are neutral cards, right? Mm -mm. I think those are Guardian. What color is that? Blue. And I've got all secret cards. Which is yellow. Mm hmm. I know some things. All right. 45 automatic. I'm going to get these in a pile so we can shuffle them. Get my burger hands all over these. All right. There's a 45 automatic. And then a physical training. Hyper awareness, mind over matter, working hunch. You know what kind of card a physical training is? Oh, I get a fingerprint kit. They give me. They. This is very strange. Oh, fingerprint kit is in TCU. Okay. So that's uh, appropriate. I thought that was uh, the uh, TFA. It's like, why are you doing it from a different. Um, what did you say? Hyper awareness. What kind of card physical training is? It's like, it looks, it'll be like this asset with some bumps on it, I think. Okay, we've got hyper awareness, mind over matter, working hunch, barricade, deduction, magnifying glass level one. There it is. Okay. Opening hand is first aid, guard dog. These are cards I remember. Magnifying glass level one, finger break it, connect the dots, curiosity. Okay. Connect the dots and curiosity. Level one doesn't matter. I, I can't believe I get a sweet level one magnifying glass. That's sick. Would you have me? Would you want me? Would you have me? <clears throat> Tea Sweezy. Standing Revelation. There's a barricade. I need that one. Uh, Arkham Horror, where the setup is the game. It's a lot to ask for for a prologue. I don't even read them in books. I'm with you. Mind over matter. Okay, hyperness, mind over matter. Working a hunch that's in here too. Luckily, this is beautifully organized. Okay, working a hunch, barricade, deduction, connect the dots should be in here. Yeah. One connect the dots, two curiosity, and one deduction should be skill cards. Deduction, two curiosity. Done. I won the race. Great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Always double check. Wow, I've got a lot of cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom. Consider it done. And that's it. Okay. Do you have an Arkham? 
No. Stream is brought to you by Nalgene USA, made in the USA, as well as the ambient record label pass inside the present. It's not true. False. I didn't know uh, Bosk was in this game. The bounty hunter? Yeah, dude. Look at this card I just pulled out. Oh, with the weird lizard man on Delay it? Delay the inevitable. Mm -hmm. That looks like an Innsmouth. That's like an Innsmouth monster. We're going to be seeing a lot of little bosks running around. Okay, I got 10 cards. I've got your room. I've got a map. I've got a shrewd analysis for no reason. What else do you need? I got it all. You got it all. He's got it all. Okay, and then is there anything weird that I need to know before we dive right into this thing? Okay. Wow, they, they have good luck you'll need it written in this, which is absolutely hilarious. That was from Smash TV. Good luck, you'll need it. Okay, 1A, act 1A, the disappearance. This isn't right. 1A, 2A. No, we don't need these. Disappearance at the estate, act 1A, agenda 1A, that's all we need. Joe says, hey guys, just picked up the new board. Got it from my girlfriend. Awesome. She's a fan of the spooky season. Those skeletons are... Yeah, Jonathan crushed it. Absolutely crushed it on that one. I was, I was impressed. I was like, what? How is this possible? Magic. Magic. David Blaine. There's also this uh, Joseph Meiger card. Mm -hmm. He's got the door on it. Does he go anywhere? I think you only get the spectral locations with with, uh, with that, but you know it, it'll tell us. Uh, and then done, and then shuffle uh, shuffle these guys up. These are the uh, we've got our things. We've got the things there. Valentino. These guys don't matter. What's this thing? Mysteries of the Lodge and all this. That was just in the stack for some reason. And it doesn't need the triple arrow. I okay. know. Out of here. Boom. I assume it was something was it was used in something. You're form. gone, Jerome. Coming in, disappearance. The skull is a minus three. If you fail during an attack or evasion, resolve each haunted ability on your location. Bummer. Bad cards. You start with physical training and fortified automatic in play. Yeah. Did it tell you that? Yeah. I don't start with anything. I have one money. Did it? <laughs> You feel robbed. I'm totally robbed. Okay. Now, here's what you need to know. No way out. The way it's shut. <clears throat> there is no positive resolution for this scenario. Move to next scenario. Just kidding. Investigators should strive to last as long as they can and gather as many clues as they can before their inevitable demise. Having flashbacks from the old uh, alien thing that we did in Forgotten Age. Yithians. Yeah. Note that while cards can still be added to the victor display during the scenario, experience and victory points will not be gathered. We cannot gain experience here, so why bother? Since these investigators do not have decks, ignore any instruction that would cause them to draw. Additionally, since these investigators do not have discard piles, each player card that would be placed in their discard is removed from the game instead. So we got 10 cards. We better use them as best we can, survive as long as possible. I have six cards. You got two in play? And so I start with a bigger hand, so that's kind of the balancing. Uh, you have 10 in your hand? Mm. You ready for this? Uh, I'm ready. Hold on, let me shuffle this up. Agenda 1A. I'm let me read this for you. Ready, huh? Agenda 1A is called Judgment XX, also known as 20. In some really creepy font, it says, There's no escaping fate. Hear the call and be reborn. Mm. Forced. Oh, it's got the cool uh, tarot, tarot star, art. Yeah. Forced. After Doom is placed on any card, each investigator must either take a damage or a horror. <laughs> two damage or two horror instead of there's five or more Doom in play. So if Doom gets placed anywhere, we take a damage or a horror. And it's two if there's five or more Doom in play. Okay, so no Doom. Forced. When any investigator is defeated, that investigator must advance this agenda. Do not remove any Doom from this agenda when it advances. It does. So anybody dies, we're done. Mm -hmm. Don't die. Act 1A, The Disappearance. Something terrible has invaded the home of Joseph Meiger. In the moments that follow, you scramble to survive. Forced, when an investigator is eliminated, place each of that investigator's clues on this act instead of his or her location. Discover as many clues as you can before your inevitable demise. 
So when you're defeated, you place clues there? Yeah. So we basically load up on clues and dump them off at there when we go. And then whenever one's investigated, everybody's investigated. Hmm? Oh, they just advanced the agenda, so we don't really know what happens. Maybe it flips over, things happen, and then you flip it back. It could be one of those flip, flipper flappers. Okay. My merry poor shuffling there at the end. Okay, so I'm going to look at what's obscuring fog. Do? What I've got going on up here, obscuring fog. Attached location is plus two shroud. After it's successfully investigated, discard obscuring fog. So it's a plus two shroud. I've got another mist that's sitting here. Investigated the location of the most clues. It's aloof, so it's not going to engage anybody. It is going to hunt. If there's a tie as to what's closest, it's going to go to the one with the most clues. Uh, and then its location gains haunted, nether mist attacks you. So if you fail an investigation where the nether mist is, you get the attack, which you don't want. So 1-1. One, one. No good. Uh, we can go ahead and flip these over because we're here. Victory 2 on the office. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Don't care. Zen Trickster saying, this has to be the standout campaign for me. The mechanics and the storytelling are fantastic. I loved Carcosa for a long time, but on a recent replay, this one won out. Well, I love it whenever every campaign we do, there's people in the chat that say this is the best campaign. That's a good sign. It's a good sign. Just like how everybody says that about the Star Wars movies, except it's just Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got uh, you <laughs> at the Victorian Halls. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the warm rays that once illuminated Flavor. these halls have faded into beams of cold gray moonlight that shine through floating motes of dust and wisps of dark mist. A haunting stillness lingers through the frigid dead halls. The many paintings that adorn the walls have faded and become unrecognizable, apparently 1,800 years, and the metal statues flanking the corridors have completely rusted over. Zero clues. Haunted. If you investigate here and fail, you lose an action. Don't let that happen. Also, uh, Gabriella has a, a reaction. Gabriella. After an enemy attacks you, even if that attack was canceled, discover a clue at your location. If I get attacked, I get a free clue. Oh, that's great. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna. I want to look at. Let me actually get a sense of what I can do here. So I've got. Uh, the, the curiosity is I've got two of them, and when I have seven or more cards in hand, they're great. So I'm going to play those early. I've got a deduction that's going to give me an additional clue whenever I investigate. I've got working a hunch that's a free clue for two. Mind over matter is my uh, get out of jail free card here. Hyper awareness is a card that I might never play. Could be relevant, but I just am never going to have the money. I have a bunch of really good cards in my hand. Yeah. Barricade is a toolbox there. Uh, discover the last clue. Discover two at a location with a lower printed shroud value. So I need you to go find one there. So that's a clue-related card. Magnifying glass, you got to play that immediately. Fast, zero, of course. And then fingerprint kit is questionable because the money game is not going to be strong on this one. So I've got a problem. I've got a six shroud with this obscuring fog, and if I fail... So I think you get out of dodge. Are you ready to ready to run the math here? So the reality is there's one doom on here. Every time a doom is placed, we have to place a horror or a damage. So basically there's no doom threshold at all. The only way that advances is if we die. And it's going to slowly kill us. And it's going to slowly kill us. Once it's at five, it's going to start doing two damage or two horror. Mm -hmm. So that's it's our like actual mist, resource. You know, it's the yeah. mist. It's the shroud. So the reality for me is like if we don't move, he's going to be where you're at. And you're gonna die quicker, so I would rather you just move, just bail, move, mm -hmm. start investigating. Well, if you can explore, yeah, let's start there. Let's start I, there. I have physical training. I can spend a resource to get a plus one brain or plus one physical. I also have a forty-five with a couple of ammo in it. I also have this fate of all odds, uh, peril revelation. What does that do? It's a bad, bad card, right? Now, keep in mind, there's this spectral watcher. You can keep shooting the fog. Whenever you kill it, it takes five damage. You kill it, it heals, it sits down for a while, and then it's back in the game. Mm. So mm. where that thing ultimately gets stuck is really important. And I've got a barricade that I can lay down to keep it out of bad places. So I'm feeling like we got to choose a wing here to go wild on. I need to resolve this card somehow. Oh, it's an elite enemy. It can get right through my barricade. So Peril says... Revelation, you must decide. If there is no other copy of Fate of Fools in play, put Fate of Fools into your play area. 
You already did it. Then it says the other options, uh, which I have to choose that one. An investigator with another copy of Fate of All Fools in his or her threat area takes two direct damage. So basically that deck is going to be filled with those cards. And yeah. because you already have one, it's going to start doing damage when you draw it. And then it says place a doom or place a doom on another copy of Fate of All Fools. Also would do damage. So you either have to deal me two damage when you get this or place a doom. It's going to be you. Yeah. Every time. Like a sponge. All right. I've only got four life, too, so watch yourself on that one. Okay, so things that are going to be really important for this scenario to work well for us. Hitting connect the dots to get two clues is going to be relevant. That's all I have, basically. <laughs> That's it. That's the most important thing. Hyper-awareness is never going to see play. We do not have enough money for this. So this is going to get pitched as a skill card. Putting it over here. Unless there are things in the game, this game, like the rooms, that give us money which maybe is going to be a, a thing. So here's what I'm thinking. Here's deduction. And these are, I really need connect the dots to hit. Fingerprint kit is probably also going to be a skill card in this one. I'm thinking I want to gain, gain a money, gain a money, play a guard dog. That is a play. What's a guard dog doing? Just soaking? Soaking. I also feel like I can come take care of this thing. There's no. We need to run from this thing until the last second because all it does is essentially evade it whenever you kill it. You read that? Mm, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, but if I get attacked, you get a clue. I get a clue. Is that real? Yeah. So maybe I'll just open a door first. Yeah. Let's see what's behind door number one. I'm gonna go to the trophy. All right, the trophy room seems like a good call. Trove Room says, flanking this door are two rotating deer heads mounted on the wall. They stare at you with hollow dead Like eyes. rotating? Rotating deer heads? Rotting. Okay, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that's the creepiest thing I think. Yeah. Just spinning deer heads? <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny, actually. Uh, uh, man. Rotting yeah. animal heads adorn this room's wooded panel walls. Once a display of power and sovereignty, now macabre displays of death and decay. You cannot help but feel their empty eyes drill through you as you explore the room. Gross. Two shroud, or two clues, two shroud. Okay, easy. Uh, and it says, haunted, lose two resources for each resource. You cannot lose, take a horror. Hada. That's a great choice for connect the dots. Yeah. Um, I think I'm gonna just keep going. I think you should keep going. Going to the billiards room, I want to play a game. From outside this room, you can hear the creaking of old wood and the patter of soft footsteps along the ground. Mm. Billiards room, three shroud, two clues. Haunted, you must either discard an asset you control or take a damage. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And I think I'm going to gain the money so that next round I have three money for my dog. Totally good. Good idea. Your turn. So I'm going to go one, two, three into the billiards room. And then my next Try turn... these up. My next turn is going to be deduction, connect the dots to clear these four clues as my first action. I like that. Yeah. And I'm not going to play the magnifying glass. Well, it's either discard an asset or take a damage. I'm going to take the damage. So I'm going to go one, two, three. That's only if you glass. fail, too. It's only, I won't fail. Magnifying glass is in play. I'm actually, I like having my hand so you guys can watch, watch with me. Um, so magnifying glass is going to be my, my, I've played it. Cost me zero. Plus one while investigating. No clues. Return it to my hand, et cetera. Okay, then we go to, uh, we're both done. So then we go to, the enemies are going to hunt. Hunter is going to go here. Hunter here is going to go here. We've got ourselves into a real Scooby-Doo situation here. So just uh, keep that in mind. Next up, we go to the good stuff where we would draw cards, but we will, we will gain a money. We can't draw, but we will gain some cash. Money's good. Money's good. Okay. And it is a CJM on the, on the, Hot tip here. Um, remember, if Guard Dog takes the damage from an attack, you're still considered attacked. Yep. And then we put a Doom on the thing. And then what happens when we put a Doom on? After Doom is placed, each investigator might take a damage or a Hora. Okay, well, obviously, I've got a 4 8, so I'm going to take a Hora. Damage. I'm going to take a damage. Right. Very nice. Okay. Now it's back to us. I'll set this up correctly. Um, so, my problem here. Oh, we got the bad the encounter cards. We gotta do the bad stuff. I always forget that. Ready? Yep. 
Now I've got a good ability, so if it's really bad, let me know. Terror in the Night. Test four brain. If I fail, I'll put Terror in the Night into play next to the agenda deck. If I fail by three or more, Terror in the Night gains Surge. If there are three copies of Terror of the Night next to the agenda deck, discard them, and each investigator takes three horror. I think this is fine for now. Okay. Here, you gotta test something. I'm down by one. What happens if we all take three horror? If there's three copies of it in play. Oh, okay. I Did succeeded. Did you succeed? Wow, that is unbelievable. <laughs> Good on you, man. Terror in the Night! I've got a two brain, so this is not... If I fail by three or more, oof. So I need a minus one or better. Otherwise it's gonna surge. Mm. What's that? Minus three. If you fail and it's an attack or evasion, it's not. So this goes next to the agenda deck, and uh, they're gonna stack up, and when there's three of them, we're gonna take Hora. And again, surge because I failed by three or more. All right, next up. Another card. Crypt Chill. Test four. If you fail, choose and discard an asset you control. All right, here we go. When an investigator at your location draws a treachery from the encounter deck, discard cards from my hand with a total of at least two book icons to cancel the effect once per round. You think curiosity counts here? You guys, curiosity counts? Yes. What does it say? I'll, I'll shuffle this again, though, just in case. We well, you have four more cards in your hand. Curiosity gains a brain in a book. This is true. It's true, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter. Game checks, you know, it doesn't matter. All right, one curiosity. Mm, curiosity. People say no. Ah, see, I knew it. I, I just felt it. Only matters, yeah, when you actually check the skill test. How important is that barricade? I've never played it in a real game. I gotta have that magnifying glass. Yeah, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna ditch hyper awareness and fingerprint kit because I'm insane. Let's see, I've got four, three more turns before I have nothing to spend money on. Mm, all right, a curiosity and the fingerprint kit's got to go. As much as I don't like it. All right. Get out of here, Crypt Chill. Back to the top? I don't need you. Back to us, yes. So my plan is first action deduction. Um, Let's go for it. Connect the dots. Mm -hmm. But then I've got two actions remaining. And with those actions, I can't do anything except go get into trouble. They're, they're aloof, though, right? This one's aloof. This one will engage and do one and one. Mm. So mm. what do you want to get up to this turn is the real question here. I like think I we, said, we really have a Scooby-Doo situation. I think that you wait. Okay. So you get the clues, mm -hmm. but then we let them move here. Then I move into here. Engage. That's so much damage. I could do like a, see, we could just hang out. Like I could get the clues and then gain two cash. Mm -hmm. And then you could gain three cash. What do you got in your hand? Anything? I like got a bunch of stuff to play. play. Yeah. Let's just get money. Let's get. Let them come one more step, and then, because at least that way you can get past. Yeah, I think that's right. And then I'm just going to Scooby Doo over to this side, and get the clues. Yeah. Uh, and then and then we'll go from there. And hopefully this is the last one that we'll need to to get. Now, do you have a? No, you don't. We don't have good evade stats. I can do one turn of good evades with minor. So I could do that next turn. They roll here. I move, engage the Spectral Watcher, evade it with my book of four, can potentially do hyper-awareness to get some bonuses, and then uh, we can both pass through and run to the other side. I like that. Okay, and it'll take them one turn to stand, one turn to move back to the middle. That kind of a situation. Okay. Here we go. Let's start by investigating the billiard room. We're going to play a deduction. 
So I'm going to be investigating a 4, 5 for magnifying glass, 6 for deduction on a 3. There is a minus 4 in the bag. Is that right? I didn't build it. This is pretty important, but I know that these cards are going to be very, very important. So I'm reluctant to pitch them. I might just have to take that test. There's a minus four, right? It told us to do that? Yeah, I think so. But it's fine. So two tokens that would fail? Out of 13. That's not bad, right? What are the odds? One and six. <laughs> oh, I don't like those odds at all. There's one minus four and a tentacle that would fail. It's one and 6.5, technically. Hmm. Could drop the barricade into it. I think that barricade's going to be important. We're going to take a crack at it. If this fails, it's kind of the end of the scenario for us. Doesn't really matter. It's a prelude. Sleeker says, your whole plan was to succeed on this test, right? Yeah, it really is the whole plan. Should I put more in? Uh, it's fine. We have time. Mm. No? Nah. Pow, pow, minus one. Pow, pow, power wheels. Uh, gain two. Yep. Connect them dots. React, pay four, connect the dots. Mm. Swoosh. Connected those dots, and then I'll two actions, gain two money. Done. OK, over to you. All right. Bruh. Let's. I'm I'm gonna use this fast action to put this back into my hand, in case I get crypt chilled again. Play my guard dog and gain two money. Mm-hmm. Now we're getting somewhere. Yep. Uh, Hunter's gonna hunt. Nice. Cool. Did a damage that way. Money. Money. Bag cards. Did you get any money? I didn't. Thank you. Just flip it right over. Doom on. Demon. Damage, I'll take a sanity. I'll take a damage. I demolish. Whispers in the dark. Put Whispers in the dark into play next to the agenda deck. Each location gains haunted, take a horror. When the round ends, discard Whispers in the dark. Fine. That's perfect, because this is our move turn. Yeah, we're not going to fail anyway. Crypt chill. Oh, next oh. level magnifying glass play. Putting it back in hand like a boss. No, it's an asset you control. Mm-mm. Oh, if you wanted to lose the magnifying glass, yeah. No, I put it back in hand. I didn't want to lose the magnifying glass. To protect glass. it, yeah. yeah. I protected it. Just pass the test, dude. Pretty, get a plus two. Didn't even exist. Literally impossible. Or a minus four. <laughs> Taking two damage. It's a chilly magnifying glass, really. This could get bad. Hold on. <clears throat> you doing damage to me or something? No. Oh, good question. Is it direct damage from that? No, it's not. You can put it on the dog if you want. On my dog? Mm hmm Like the one from the Doom. You can put uh -huh, it on the doggy. Uh -huh. I want to take the attacks for the free clues, though. All right. We're going to run through here. All right. We do the Mind Over Matter play. So do you want me to do move, evade, move? Mm. That's fine, because you're here and he's, he's exhausted, right? Yeah, he won't hunt. So he'll stand, and then we'll have the next turn to move. Yeah. Um, because then what I would do is move, move, and then I'm going to probably put a first aid into play. Mm, nice. Which is just three heals. It's like one of the... I need to get one off of you in case you get crypt chilled again. That's true. I think there's only two in the deck, though. We've seen them both. Never mind. Forget about it. But there could be other things, you know. I, I'm, it's hard to say. Okay. Well, the plan starts with you. Okay. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six. My curiosity idea was 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 wrecked. Okay. Then let's go for it. I'm just gonna start the turn by playing Mind Over Matter. It's a fast action, so it doesn't take anything. So my uh, book stat is used instead of my fight or evade stat. First action, move to the trophy room. Engaging the Spectral Watcher. CJ, I haven't watched Lovecraft Country yet, but I'd love, I'm planning on it. It looks great. I'm going to commit a curiosity 
to give myself mm. plus two. So I'm currently at six to its three. Cross my fingers for you. At worst, I'll come engage it and I'll start beating it down. Six to its three. Two tokens in the bag that fail, but there are five tokens. Uh, no, that, that's not true. How many tokens are in here? Nothing 13, but success 13. tokens, really. That's a minus four. Uh -huh. Welcome to Arkham. Uh -huh. Okay. <clears throat> All right, that's fine. Yeah. Does it have that thing? It has alert, yes. So I'm going to take one damage and one horror. Because of why? It has alert. So if you fail and evade, it attacks you. Mm. OK, well, I'm tempted to do that again. OK. Second action was evade. Well, if you do it again, you're <clears throat> stuck in the room with them. I know. But uh, why don't you let me come and just take them? What am I going to do with my third action? I mean, you can attempt it straight up without having to like add anything to it. Mm-hmm. I could just buff it again. That at least gets you through through the pod because like this is the only turn that I have a four evade. Um, past this is just going to be impossible. Haunted only triggers when you're investigating the location, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, if I miss, I'm going to die. But that's fine. Mm. Let's see. And then he'll stand up and engage me again. Just let me come engage him. Even if he's wasting action. Yeah, uh, that's so bad. We've already failed. Okay. I guess I'll just, what, pass? Mm -hmm. I can try to punch him. Does he have retaliate? He doesn't have retaliate. I'll try to punch him. All right. Fight stat of three, book stat of four. Head by one. Let's see if we can get one for the Gipper here. Minus three. Mine. There is no, there is no god here. Move. Engage. Swing. Mm-hmm. I'm a four. I'll just stick it a four for now. What about that um, automatic? You want to shoot him or something? I don't think it's worth the bullets yet. I will spend one to get to a five, so I'm ahead by two. Zero. Nailed it. So I move, engage. Move, engage, punch. Yep. All right. Uh, enemies attack. Take one and one. And then uh, we go to the good stuff. I'll put one on the dog, and we'll deal one back to him. Yeah, eat that, spectral man. OK, money. Money. Doom. Take a sanity. And bad cards. Watcher's Grasp. Heal three damage from the Spectral Watcher. <laughs> Ready the Spectral Watcher. It moves, engages, and attacks as if it were the enemy. I got to cancel that. Yeah, I agree. Um, working a hunch. Gone. It just straight up cancels it? Yeah, All right, cancels the revelation. Must. Oh, yeah, and I get a, well, it's a clue from my location. Yeah, don't, don't have one. Too, too efficient. Um... Take two direct damage. Okie dokie. What's that? Oh, I see, I see. Don't worry about it. It's the fate of all fools. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, our turn? Yeah. I'm going to take off. That's fine. What's your? You have a grand plan here? I'm going to shoot the Spectral Watcher. Why don't you do that, and if it fails miraculously, I can uh, at least be there for it. All right, I'm going to pay one to go to five. I'm going to use my automatic, so I'm at six to so a physical three. physical training, and then also the 45? Yeah. Very nice. Uh, six to three, and we'll see if we can take care of them. Uh, 
Got it? Yeah. Two damage. All right, so what does he do? He, when the Spectre Watcher is defeated, instead of discarding it, heal all damage from it, disengage it from all investigators, and exhaust it. It does not ready during the upkeep phase this round. Very nice. Okay. So Leave it's down little... for two towns. Down for two towns. Leave a little token on there. All right. Okay, first and, action, nice. And then I'll move here, and then I'll move to the master bedroom. This unmarked door is old and partially rotted. Set it in a quiet corner of the upstairs hallway. A thick, dark fog seeps beneath the door and wafts around your feet. Three shroud, two clues. Place one of your clues on master bedroom <laughs> if you fail. So good. We won't fail. Your turn. Okay. Can I enter the entry hall? I'm afraid that oh, I've bugattied cool. myself out of ever getting the office because uh, it's a six shroud. There's no way. I, I, could, I could churn out a hyper awareness play there. I suppose. Um, first action, second action. I'm unwilling to get haunted by this. Fair. Right. I got clues, so I'm gonna go to the balcony. I think. Okay. And see if I can get some, some madness going. Balcony. Each of your cards with health takes one direct damage. Is Jerome a card with health? I that believe that it is, which means I die. If you fail, the one shroud. I won't fail, right? If you fail one shroud, you don't deserve to be in the game anyway. <laughs> I think that's right, yeah. yeah, no, I think that's right. But if you wanted to come first aid me, feel free, man. Feel free. Uh, okay, yeah, Whispers in the Dark should be discarded. Did you get that? You did get yep, that. Yeah, it's gone. You just said it. All right, we're done. Gain of money. He doesn't ready. Hunter's Hunt. And then uh, gain the cash. Doom on. <laughs> it's a ticking. <clears throat> no, I, I don't want direct damage to be no, a thing. No, no, yeah. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to flip, drop, and reverse it. I'm taking it here. Hmm. I, have, nice. I have reasons. OK, and then uh, we put the Doom on. We took the stuff. Bad cards. Here we go. All right. Shadowhound, Prey, Lowest, Hunter, Retaliate, Forest, after Shadowhound attacks you, resolve each haunted ability at your location. He must be buried. Only a one on the evade there. Yeah, you match it. <laughs> oh, man, that's gross. Okay, let's see what I've got up, what I've got up to here. A Shadowhound? Well, hello. Ah, oh, that's gross. Hey, I can evade pretty well, man. Yeah, you're not, not so slow anymore. Okay. Let's think about our lives here. What are you going to do with that shadow house? Take it out. You're going to kill it? Mm -hmm. Shoot it? Put a little it's dog on dog? Guard on dog. Mm -hmm. Dog on dog action. <laughs> I'm probably going to evade and then... Uh, Clue, clue. Where's your, where's your first aid? How close is it to, uh, well, to if relevance? If I don't get an enemy soon. I also have two copies of Delay the Inevitable. What is that? You're about to die, you don't? Uh, it's fast. Play only during your turn. Attach to investigate your location under their control. Reaction. When you're dealt damage or horror, discard Delay the Inevitable and cancel all of it. Forced. When the Mythos phase ends, you must either spend two resources or discard Delay the Inevitable. Oh my, I think I need that. I don't need the money for anything else. I mean, I could potentially get rid of my Shadow Hound, move to you, and play to And fast it? Mm -hmm. Really? Very impressive. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let me try it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if that, that works. All right. Let's do my uh, regular punch four to two. That's kind of what it hinges on. And I need the money. I think we just need to draw well from the bag. Four to two. There we go. No bullets being spent? Not, not yet. I don't want to waste a bullet until I know this one hits. Yeah. Oh my Missed. gosh, this game is horrible. Who plays this? So, Why does anybody play this game? It's like getting punched in the face. Is for it an attack? Hours. An attack of opportunity is an attack, right? 
Yes. So if I move and take an attack of opportunity, does my reaction after an enemy attacks you, even if that attack was canceled, discover a clue at your location count? Yes, it does. And also, does it have Hunter? Does it have Retaliate? Yep. Then it attacks you right now. Oh, great. You just failed. Uh, well, I'll take a damage. Mm-hmm. And get a clue. There's only one minus three in there. There's a minus three and a minus four. Well, it's pretty sticky. Did you get your cheeseburger fingers all over it? Maybe, yeah. Um, actually... Yeah. Put on the doggy. No, I'll take it here for reasons. Um, you gotta have some good reasons. That's right. <laughs> One onto the hound. You triggering the dog? Remember how this works? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's exactly how that works. Then I'll use my 45. I didn't even need to pass that test. Wait, did you get a clue? Did I you get got one? it, yeah. Nice. Uh, I'll use my 45. Um, oh, that's so one's per round, okay. I'm at 5 to 2. I'm going to head by 3. Oh, wait. Uh, I didn't have a clue. Yeah, right? We can so, decide when that happens. Right? Yeah, definitely. What does this say? After an enemy attacks you, this says after Shadowhound attacks you, resolve the haunted ability. So we choose the haunted ability, put a clue, we don't have one, and then we get one. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, this is this is games 101. All right, five to two. You ready? Yeah. Here it is. Three. Got it. Okay. So two damage here. Done. It's going to defeat the Shadowhound. When I do that, I'm also going to play an evidence. Oh, boo gaudy. To get the clue. Here we go. And then that was second action. Third action, I'm going to move to you. What's up, man? Fourth action, do you need me to do this? I Yeah, delay the inevitable for sure. Delay the inevitable. OK. So I, I get a free cancel, and i got to spend two to keep it going. I can easily do that. All right, Shadowhound is getting evaded. Wait a minute. Yeah. Gary says, LOL, who had the 2 hour and 15 mark in the Steven loses heart and despairs as to why anyone ever plays this game pool? Yeah, we're clearly not here just to sell you on the game. Brett, Brett says, pretty sure that's part of the marketing <laughs> campaign. Arkham Horror, it's like getting punched in the face for hours. <laughs> LOL. Okay. Um, I'm going to evade this dog. You got any, uh, you got any uh, foot cards that you don't care about? No. I think I'm going to th drop this barricade in. I'm, I'm tired of looking at this thing. Here's your barricade, you stupid hound. Um, so I'm going to be a 4 to a 1, which means the skulls don't don't screw us it's over. It's just two tokens. There's this, it's just the two. Back to that, like, 15% chance. 18%. 17. Oh, that's I'm going to throw my magnifying glass out first. Just in case. Just in case. Really, really be able to see that dog. I just want to be able to see what I'm evading. All right, come on. No whammies, no baddies. Big money. Minus one. Okay. Evaded. Second action. Grabbing that clue. Four to one. Grab Same that two clue. tokens. Same two tokens. Here we go. Nailed it. Got one. Because I'm up by three. That's how you play the game of Arkham. Here we go. Five to one, actually, because of magnifying glass. Last action. Last clue. Plus one, just to prove it. Done. Harvest. Arkham didn't know what hit it. Uh-huh. This is going to be the fun one. That one's impossible. We're going to have to let that one go. Uh, you're up by one. I think we should run into the shadow. It's plus two because of the, the fog. Out of six. Down by one. But if you investigate it once, it's gone. Mm. So I need to pump hyper awareness to the max. Mm -hmm. When the mythos face ends, either either spin two or discard. Okay, so at the end, after the encounter card, is when I have to pay this two. So keep that in mind. All right. Okay. Now we go to the enemy phase. This is when enemies will hunt. He doesn't ready, right? He's ready now. Shadowhand readies now. Uh, it will prey on, it's a tie, so I believe it will prey on the lowest foot, which is you. Uh, you got a, got a nice breakout play for Jerome here. 
gonna go up to the office, see what I can get into up there. Uh, then we gain a money. Can't draw a card, for obvious reasons. Uh, then we'll add a doom, which means we take a damage or a horror. Oh wait, is it if it's five? Hmm. T if five or more doom are in play, they are. So add a doom, and then we gotta take. Well, I gotta take two uh, sanity here. I'm one away on both stats from instantaneous death. Yeah, I'm there as well. Okay. So this is I'm the turn. Technically two. I'm I'm a few more away, but. Do you have any clever ways to get clues? Don't forget, you can cancel two of it. Hmm. But if you can pay two, you may as well wait and keep going. That's true. There will always be another two now. There will always be another two. But also, it would uh, save me two money. So I could, like, go move, move, play hyper awareness, take two damage next turn, and then have one shot at plus three book. You have me come play this for no reason? No, right now is the reason. I could drop it for the two, and that would give us oh, one yeah, turn yeah. where I could actually maybe get this. Yeah, you may as well use it instead of paying the money. Because you're going to play one on yourself, right? i got to deal with this thing first. Yeah, you're in a pickle. Mm -hmm. You're always saving me. <laughs> it's fine. Do you think if that uh, agenda advances, it's over? Or do you think that we keep going? Or the the winning the the non dead investigator keeps going. I don't know. Huh. I'm just trying to live now. Mm -hmm. But I got at least three turns. If I just sit here. If you just sit there, seriously. One damage from this thing. One damage. One damage. What about the doom though? Sanity. How much do you got? Die. Yeah, you would die. I played the lily inevitable. Yeah, you got to play Delay the Inevitable, I think. Does Retaliate trigger on gaining money? Yes. All uh, things that aren't immediately dealing with the Shadow Hound. I'm going to just deal with it. All right, what are you looking at with your hand? Just Let's get it, let's get it on the table here. What are, you, what are you up to? What do you got? I can Delay the Inevitable. Right. I can cancel an attack. Oh, that's good. I have a first aid. Mm, that first aid will buy you a turn. But it's not fast. Oh, and, and you got to spend money, you got to spend actions to do it? Yeah. This is why those early healing cards in this game are a complete waste of time. Always have been. Always will be. Um, I'm going to use Delay the Inevitable. Yeah. To save me some money. Thank you. That was a great transfer of wealth. <laughs> you paid two for me, and then I saved two. Doom has been on. Let's see the encounter cards. Wraith, Hunter, <laughs> Forest. When the Wraith is defeated by damage, instead of discarding it, attach it to its location. Attached location gets haunted. Spawn Wraith at this location. What location? Wherever I'm at. If I defeat it, that's fine. That's a problem. I'm just going to take this out and take one from this. It's fine. <clears throat> it's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. Whispers in the dark, each location gets haunted. Take one horror. That might change your plans. There are no plans, let's face it. There are no plans. At this point, it's a total run and, and try to live. We knew Doom awaited. All right, so I'm currently a five testing against a six. I can give it a crack. I'm going to take a boring turn. Oh, I'm supposed to have extra ammunition in my hand. No. Oh. Gives you more shots. It's just uh, two bullets for three, two. That's hilarious. Oops. We were playing the hard version where you didn't get extra ammo. Look at all these cards you can't run. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? Or is it zero? Is extra ammo zero? That'd be way better. Eat lead. Man, the Guardian cards are cool. Is extra ammo an event? It absolutely it is. It is. I can see it on the screen. It costs zero. Okay, it does cost zero. Okay. No, that's heat lead. Let me handle this. I'll see you in hell. Teamwork. Heat lead. On the hunt. Taunt. Heroic rescue. First watch. Dodge. Cost two. One XP. Oh, it's an XP card. Place three ammo tokens on a firearm asset. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's all of no good. 
No good at all. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take a turn. Mm -hmm. Move, move, move. Consider it done. Over to you. We're dead, man. Um, but we got a lot of clues. I'm going to punch this wraith. <laughs> Four to two. Got Nailed it. it. Punch the wraith. Yes. Oh my gosh, what happens? Heal a uh, damage and a horror. Oh my gosh. And I hit for one. That Wraith may have just bought you a turn. Attaches here. Third action, we're gonna punch this hound. Now don't forget, when the shadow hound does it when it damages you or after it attacks you, resolve each haunted ability. So there's like a bunch. One horror, one direct damage, and spawn Wraith at this location. Okay, so it will come back into play. Does dodge cancel all of the attack effects or just the damage? Cancel the attack. So it cancels it entirely. So there is no after attack step. So that dodge is going to be clutch to make sure that dog doesn't. Now, unless he retaliates and then punches you in the uh, enemy phase, then it's over. It's game over, man. It's game over. No, you can take some direct damage, I guess. It'd just be really bad. You don't want that. I failed. That's what you didn't want. So he attacks me? Four to two. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, you can, uh, yep. Dog it? I don't know. I can't believe we've drawn that minus three so many times. Mm. What's this pro like? What's the story that this pro, it's like, this is the worst dinner party ever. I'm gonna take one and use the guard dog to do one. If, yeah, and then uh, and then you're going to get all the haunted stuff. One direct damage? Mm, and a clue goes back? No. One direct damage, Wraith comes back in and engages you. So that's horrible. That'll be two sanity damage in the enemy phase. One and one, baby. Ugh. Uh, and then you also take a sanity because of this. Take one horror. Mm. You're doomed. That's a problem. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I almost made it out. Yeah, you're you're haunted okay. forever. Uh, done. Go to the enemy phase. Uh, hunters are going to do their thing. And this uh, investigator with the most clues, actually, this is going to hunt to you because you're the closest. And then uh, you're going to take a bunch of attacks. Start with a dog. Well, the race going to make me go insane. Yes, 100%. So when I go away, I put my clues here. It also says when any investigator is defeated, and this goes away, right? At the end of the round, yeah. Uh, that investigator must advance the agenda. Do not remove any doom from this agenda when it advances. Ooh, a lot of stuff fun back there. Agenda 1B, your demise. In the missing person section of your campaign log, next to your character's profile, make a record of that character's fate as follows. Then flip this agenda back over. Oh. If you were defeated by Spectral Watcher's attack. Nope. If you were defeated by a monster. That's Wraith. Ra didn't Wraith end you? Yeah. Okay. Enemy attack. Record character's name was claimed by the Spectres. Cool. It's interesting how you could kind of craft... I like the other options that were back there. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Mm -hmm. That's all we know. And the doom stays on. It doesn't clear, right? Yep. Yeah. All right, hey, we've got a shot at this. Speaking of doom, doom on? Doom on. I'm taking one, two, gain a money, and then uh, draw my card. Fate of all fools. Beautiful card to draw. It's going to come right into play. These guys are here also. Doggy's got a damage. And then you did. Sorry, ghost of Gabriella. You want to make it. OK, so it's my turn. I'm going to pay two for hyper awareness. I'm going to investigate the office. It's a six to a five right now. Mm-hmm. 
So let's go 6 to a 5, 6 to a 6, 6 to a 7, 8. I think you pay. 6 to a 9. Let's go 3 up. To try to get rid of the 2. Yeah. 3 up. Here we go. Oh, and this guy. Yeah, thank you. Watcher hunts. So he'll actually get you before anything else. Oh my goodness, he got the minus four. Devastating. I think I may have actually pumped on one more on accident. Hold on, let me think about it for a second. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That cost me six. Nine to six. I failed. Devastating. Haunted. Choose this card card from your hand. I can't. After. I don't have a hand. All right. Then, uh, you know, it's still your turn. It's the last action. Yeah, I wish you had a barricade so you could keep the spectral out of the room. He's elite. Mm. All the bad cards. We still can't play them. Uh, okay. The spectral watcher is going to wreck me. Hunter. Attack. One damage. If you were defeated by the Spectral Watcher's attack, record character's name was taken by the Watcher. Take a horror from the treasure card, is that right? Yeah. Taken by the Watcher? From the Haunted? What does that mean? Uh, choosing to discard a card from your hand. Can't. Attach the case sexually investigated. Nope. Anything weird that we're missing? If you fail, put it into play in your agenda. If there are three or more copies, that doesn't do anything. Nothing happens here. No, so then the... Yeah. And your six clues go here, though. It's Hunter, and then... Happens. All right, so you were taken... Look at this. The other options were if there were seven Wh or... Whispers in the Dark was gone la last turn. It goes away at the end of the turn. Um, if there were seven or more Doom in play when this agenda advanced, which if this had one more on it, uh, so if I had basically not died there. Yeah, or when whatever card you did two direct damage to me, we put a Doom on instead mm -hmm. for this thing. Yeah. Uh, it says, by horror damage, uh, whatever, so-and-so disappeared into the mist. If you were defeated by any other effect, then you were pulled into the Spectral Realm. Interesting. So what's the Spectral Watcher death thing? You just got taken by the Watcher. Taken by Watcher. Okay. So basically, we needed to get to seven Doom. To get the third resolution. I don't well, know if it's would, any better or worse. Who would, who would know to do that? Also, if I had put Doom on, I would also have taken an extra damage, and I, I had none to spare. So it's all very interesting how it plays Play out. That. Okay, so now we gotta we gotta go to the we gotta go to the stuff. Okay. Do, and the clues don't matter. I mean, I assume they will in the resolution, right? Yeah, we'll see. Otherwise, we were totally baited. If no resolution was reached because each investigator was defeated, go to page twenty-four. I mean, there's no other option, right? Yeah, there's no other option. Mr. Sanford, thank you so much for coming. I know you're a busy man. Your presence at tonight's meeting is very much appreciated. Joseph shakes Carl Sanford's hand firmly as he speaks. Hold on. Okay. Just make sure. Sanford merely nods. I know you've just only just arrived, but I have some private matters to discuss with you, if that's all right. Joseph continues his narrow eyes shifting back and forth between the men flanking Mr. Sanford. Very well, the elderly man nods to his two enforcers who step aside to give him privacy. He cradles his hands behind his back, his stature impressive for his age. His discerning eyes fall on Joseph. What's the matter? Joseph leans closer. It's here, sir. It's here in this very house. There's a quiet pause between the two men and then Carl Sanford smiles. No experience is earned. In your campaign log, record X pieces of evidence were less behind. X is the number of clues on Act 1A, the disappearance. Eight. So eight evidence left behind. Eight evidence left behind. Phil's magic saying, that's all right. You got the tough luck out of the way now. Uh, Jan saying... If just one of you dies by the Watcher, it's not that big of a deal. Apparently getting killed by the monster is the worst, which is what happened to me. Oh, good. And then the one where you get to seven doom is the best. 
Okay. Well, how were we supposed to know? Return you to the player cards and use the collection. Each player chooses a normal investigator and then actually plays the game. Very nice. So a little prologue. You know, it's a way to... So something happened here. The mist. People miss, being pulled in. There was some spectral hounds. And that's setting the stage for whatever we're going to actually have happen to us. I also wonder... Does it make you really appreciate these uh, spectral boards? boards? They look yeah. really cool. Undone Those mists boards. happening. Yeah. That's where, like, you get this. Let's just get it up in here. Let me get that reflection going. Get that. Get your room out of there too. We gotta see the, the skeletons. There's a glow to it. It's really bizarre that it, it was achieved. It's uh, because we were able to layer silver over green. It's unreal. Yeah. I'm so excited. it's just subtle. It's just subtle enough. It's mainly silver, right. but it's a little green. So is that the end? That's the end of the prologue. Oh my goodness, that was horrible. It kind of in like the back, like. I feel like I think they wanted me to feel. Yeah, you feel like you want to feel. I mean, it's like a, ooh, you know, when it's like you're watching the beginning of a movie before the opening credits. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, something weird's happening. And it's like, Poof, and then we go to our heroes, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, we're about to go to our heroes. But it's also, it's similar to, in some ways, to that Yithian thing, right? Can you imagine? This is what happened to us. So we didn't know anything about Circle Undone. And we, like, spent probably two to three weeks brainstorming the decks we were going to build yeah. together. And Built the, them all, got to Circle Undone, didn't play them that day. That's a bummer. It's weird. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff. Either you love it or you hate it. Well, I mean, I feel like in a game like this, you just have to submit to the game. Yeah, you got to submit to the game. And it's like, all right, well, they want us to experience this for some reason at the very first. Mm -hmm. It's a cool concept. The only thing I think that holds it back mechanically, just from, a, like from the situation we just mentioned, if it took way less time to set up, like if it was like, yeah. Uh, you get a you get a investigator and it has one card with like six abilities you can use once per game, mm -hmm. rather than having the cards in your hand, and just get to the table and do it, and then you can maybe still play the next scenario because yeah. you got Jack to get together and play Arkham. That's where I think it could improve, just like mm -hmm. from a reality standpoint. But otherwise, it's a cool concept. I, I feel like the other thing you could do is you could literally have it be like a two or three page choose your own adventure. Yeah. Just text, mm -hmm. and it's like Steven's going to represent this character. I'm going to represent this other character. If no, these other people are chosen, skip those lines. That would be cool. And it's like you could you're do still telling easily, the story. Yeah. It's cool they're doing it in the card game. I'm fine with it. But I get what you're saying. You have to basically do the effort of a full setup for kind of a half of a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But hey, we're set up now, and now we know. And now we've got the tower. The tarot card is about to happen. Mm. And so we have, running throughout the start of the campaign, is basically we have this understanding that this event happened. Jerome was killed by the Spectral Watcher. Gabriella, you know, succumbed to the, the, the hounds. And now we don't really know what that means. And so we go into the campaign, and just judging by the fact that we have evidence, it's like, are we, is the circle and down about discovering what happened to the characters that we just played? And I haven't completed the campaign. We're about three in, I think. And Are you guys playing that now? Or were you playing that I now? I played it since six, seven months ago. That's where you're playing so pre-pandemic. No pre I forgot everything. Yeah. Um, but that means that it might be about solving like this murder or crime or something, which would be super cool. That, that would be a really cool way. That, that's a common like movie thing. Right? Yeah. It's like they show the thing and then... Yeah. It's and like Knives Out, right? They show you the I end love and that they, movie. you're working it out. It is... Uh, Who's, isn't there somebody who's always trolling me? You're done baking. It's always coming on and saying, I don't like, I think Knives Out is garbage. And just so that I can be very clear, that is wrong. <laughs> it's not true at all. It's a good movie. It's an incredibly good movie. Incredibly good. Hey, who out there is, is Amp for Dune? Sound off in the chat, because I can't say the name. I'm sorry. I, I've tried to learn it 20 different times, and, and I believe it's uh, Denis... Denis Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. Anytime I try to like, like, act like I know how to uh, say French, Watiti. I just drop all uh, basically letters. Denis Villeneuve. Ah, oh, Denis Villeneuve. It's like when you're riding the train. Villeneuve. Leonard says Villeneuve. 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 Denis Villeneuve. Breck saying I'm so amped for Dune. Yeah, yeah everyone's saying they're hyped. It looks amazing. I also really love. The actors that they have in that movie, yeah, across the board: Zendaya, Jason Momoa, et cetera, et cetera. They got all. I forget the, hits. the kid's uh, name, but he was from something I watched that someone was like, "Oh, he was in this," and I was like, "There it is." Somebody said uh, Robert told me that he is like known in the uh, theatrical uh, community as like the up and coming like actor. Well, this like, is his chance. One, you know? I mean, this is effectively the 
you know, Dune, Dune's a, a legacy story. Ooh, Eddie Sand, Ryan Johnson is uh, writing a Have you heard what they're doing, out. though? Have I told you this? Uh uh-uh. uh. So it's kind of a serial thing where it's like, you know how like uh, True Detective is like different characters every time? Yeah. Except for yeah, the detective. It's the same detective. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be so good. Which is so good. Because he be also so did good. an incredible job. I love it. And I just love knowing that Ryan Johnson can make movies that are great. He can. Uh, other than uh, Brick. Brick is a phenomenal movie. I haven't seen it. What else has Ryan done? Did he do like Flubber or something weird? Uh, no, no, no. Um, uh, it's got... Uh, Portals? I can see it now. Close. Uh, uh, it's got Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Tri- Tripper. And... Um, the guy from Die Hard. I can't right, remember his name. Right, right, right. Uh, it's not Flubber. It's not Tripper. Looper. Looper. That's right. There it is. <laughs> Gosh. Leonard got what's it. what's his name? What's the actor? Bald. Yeah, I'm not your guy on You that know one. what I'm talking about? I do know who you're talking about, yeah. From Die Hard? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I cannot think of his name. But uh, that was... That I didn't see... I don't think I saw Looper. Did you see Looper? Yeah. It's is good. it good? Yeah, it's good. Is it like they, they did good? the thing where they were trying to get... Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt to look like a young version of Bruce Willis. Gosh, there it is. Oh, Bruce Willis. I see yeah. dead people, right. Um, and, like, it's a little trippy. Like, they have him makeup where he kind of looks a little like Bruce Willis. Because it's the young him and the old him. Um, I like my... And, yeah, so I thought it was good. I also love Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So. I like Joseph Gordon-Levitt straight up. He doesn't need any uh, tinkering. No. He's perfect the way he is. <laughs> Brick's a great movie. Oh, my gosh. All right, friends. Hey, we'll uh, we'll kick this off, I guess, officially, uh, where we get to play the new investigator decks. That's really um, funny. We had the deck discussion, and then we got. I had uh, no idea this is what we. But was that's what it us. feels like when you do this kind of stuff. Yeah, the uh, real the real Arkham Horror, as they say. So we'll get back into this. I'll be playing Stella. You're playing Winnie. Is that right, Winifred? Winifred. All right. Hey, Win- we're, Winnie the Bish. We're rocking it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and link it one more time to the uh, Circle Undone board in the chat. Absolutely, thanks uh, so massive much for anybody who has out. bought those already. Uh, like I said, we're trying to complete the set, not necessarily because it's the best financial move, but because it bothers us that that there was just not the full, you should have all the cycles represented. And then uh, we're also looking at location connectors, of course, that's in the pipeline right now, um, and then potentially some other things. Because uh, Arkham's just got a million different ways you can make it. Now, now that we're both in, awesome. in, you just yeah. got to have it all. You got to understand, you know, once you play a bunch, you really have a much b- more reasonable appreciation of what products might be uh, makeable, worth making, I should say. Location connectors, obviously, uh, that's necessary. But just rolling into any cycle that you want with the appropriate board, very important to me. I think that's very important. We're going to do it. All right, I'm going to start clicking the button, Zach. What time is it? 410. It's Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. That's Let's right. Let's get on out and have a great weekend. Ma- massive shout out to everyone that's already bought the boards, any of the boards and tokens, and the subscribers. Innsmouth coming in two weeks. I'm excited. It's ca- it's one of the things that always made us hesitant about doing Arkham content was spoiling stuff. Uh, so we won't be touching Innsmouth for a, a minute uh, to give people a, a good amount of head start. We're obviously just starting Circle, so we have eight more scenarios to go here before we even uh, clear that hurdle. And there's one, oh, Dream Eaters is the other one after Yeah, that. we got to do yeah. Dreams so, as well. Uh, thank you to everyone for watching, subscribing, commenting, being subscribers and to the products, etc. Worth saying again, to anybody that was affected by the Barkham Horror thing, we're very sorry about that. That's something that was uh, about as fully out of our control as you can imagine, um, but it does not quell the rage caused. By I'm sure you in some ways, uh, but us for sure. Um, that's always a big. Yeah. There's always a lot of emotional expression that happens in the room once we find that kind of stuff out. So uh, it's a PG channel though, so we won't share that with you. <laughs> we do appreciate you though. Uh, stay safe out there. Have a great weekend, and we'll catch you guys all next week.